All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Hawaiian um, Affairs Committee hearing. I'm Senator Maile Shimabukuro, Chair of the Committee. Other members of the Hawaiian Committee are Vice Chair Senator Kurt Favela, Member Senator Leslie Hara, Senator Jared Keohokalole, and Senator Tim Richards. This hearing is being streamed live on YouTube. You can find links to viewing options for all Senate hearings and meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. If you're interested in seeing the written testimony, you can go to the legislature's website at capital.hawaii.gov. In the unlikely event that we must abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. For all people testifying remotely, all testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until it's your turn to testify. Um, as is the committee's practice, there's a two minute time limit per testifier. If there are temporary technical glitches during your turn to testify, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. We appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee has already received your written testimony. Members, please wait to ask your questions for the testifiers until we have gone through all the testifiers uh, for this GM 511. Um, just some housekeeping. Um, if you need to use the Lua or the, the restroom, when you go out this room, turn to the left. Uh, there should be some, if you go down to the corners of the hall, unfortunately the ones on the right side are, are broken. So go to the left side. Um, anyone that has a flight, I know Senator um, Malama Solomon has a flight. So we're gonna call her kind of out of order your notice. Anyone else that has a flight or some urgent, okay, yes, please alert me. Okay, yeah, so maybe uh, we'll have you go after Senator Solomon um, to come forward. And, um, and in case if there's some people that are walk in, so if I don't um, identify you properly by your name, make sure you state your name and then begin your testimony with your position, um, support, oppose, or comments. Um, I think that's the main thing for announcements. Uh, so with that, um, this is um, GM 511, and this is confirmation of Ikaipa Anderson as chair of the Department of Wine Homelands. Um, so just, uh, sorry, just going forward, I know she told you guys the restroom is over there, but um, we have the minority caucus room open to everybody, get refreshments in there and whatnot for everybody, and the restroom's also in there too, so you guys don't have to walk too far. So there's food, uh, drinks, and whatever, help you guys self in there. Appreciate it. Oh, mahalo, Thank mahalo, you. Mr. Favela. How nice, how nice. If you don't know where to find it, you can ask one of the staff um, or the sheriffs will show you the way to the minority caucus room. Oh, perfect timing for our governor. Um, so while I get seated again, so this is GM 511. This is the confirmation for Ikaika Anderson uh, for chair of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and the Hawaiian Homes Commission. Um, and so first up, Welcome, Governor Josh Green, who is testifying in support. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Good to see you, Governor. Um, uh, Chair, I won't, uh, I won't read my testimony. Been on the other side of that desk for many years. It's good to see you all. Uh, I'd humbly ask you to support and vote favorably on Ikaika Anderson. He has committed himself, so this is in support, Kai Anderson for DHHL uh, chair. He's devoted a good part of his life to caring for the people of Hawaii. He cares deeply about the Hawaiian community. He's proven that in my estimation uh, with his actions. I have to say, though, I did not speak to that in my testimony. When I saw him with the homeless community in Waimanalo, I knew that this was a person that should be supported. People who have seen him, who have participated in that, if anyone has watched his efforts to help those who are struggling, uh, they could have no choice but to give this guy a chance to serve and see if he can help our state. So I know it's a complicated process. I know that you will hear many people in favor and, and perhaps some opposed uh, to the nominee, but I'm governor and I'm asking for people's consideration to give it a shot. Uh, we've put together a large team that we feel can work together, and we would be honored if you would support him. I think he will do right by the people of Hawaii. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Governor. Appreciate you being here. Next, we have former Governor John Waihe'e um, in support. If he's here yet. If not, we will. Um, we can recall 
can be a future Calvin King. Next, we have former Governor Neil Abercrombie in support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Members, aloha. Aloha. Uh, could I just uh, beg the indulgence of the chair and the members just for one one moment or two uh, on a point of personal privilege? Uh, it is a particular point of pleasure and honor for me to be able to see uh, Herbert Tim Richards the <laughs> third sitting uh, in this chair. Uh, if that's a conflict of interest, I, I gladly plead uh, guilty to it. His father, uh, Monty Richards, was one of the very first persons 60 years ago, 60 years ago, who gave this holy boy a, a chance to to be able to see what he could contribute to Hawaii when he was a regent at the University uh, of Hawaii. And I was starting on my graduate student career there. And I got to know him and had the opportunity to, to visit him on, on the big island and see this kid uh, here when he was just little. And uh, I just wanted to, to uh, it reminded me when I was coming today about what public service and the record and legacy of it and the, the Richards family uh, stands for that. Uh, and that, that lets me segue into uh, uh, the, the legacy of the, of the uh, Anderson family. Um, I've known three generations, I guess it's going on f almost four now, uh, generations of, of the Anderson family uh, for the Senator Favela, the Republicans and Democrats. They had covered the, the full spectrum of, uh, of uh, political activity uh, in Hawaii. And uh, I, I understand, I've been, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, where the uh, 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 Hawaiian Affairs Committee is concerned, I've had uh, as governor, made nominations that have had to come through the the uh, the grinder of uh, of confirmation, and and not not without opposition and 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 uh, controversy and so on. So that 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 that's not unique to this particular situation. All of us, everyone here who is, is serving serving in public office now has or has had opposition. The question is, uh, can we meet the challenges and keep our eyes on the prize? The eyes on the prize are what is best for the beneficiaries of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. That's what we need to concentrate on. The personalities involved can, can make their way through, whether it's ho'oponopono or whatever it is. I just want to conclude with, by uh, 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 offering to you my uh, examination of when I, when I first read there was some opposition uh, to uh, Ikaika's uh, uh, nomination. Uh, so I, I made it a, a point to get go get the five points that apparently caused some consternation for some of the members. And I all I ask is, as I ask in my testimony, let's step back, let's take a, a couple of deep breaths, let's keep our eyes on the prize, and let's let's not let the the uh, uh, challenges get in the way. I ask anybody. I, I know the press is here. I hope that that they'll publish what the five points were. And from my point of view, and that's all, and I'll conclude with this. From my point of view, uh, and, and the experience that I've had both as a legislator, as, as a colleague to you folks, and, uh, and, and as someone who had the responsibility of making a, 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 a nomination uh, to the state Senate and who has voted on it myself then uh, over the past half century. Um, my honest assessment is, is that nothing in the plan the $600 million uh, 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 plan and legislation is obviated by any of these points. I see them as complementary. I see them as following up on trying to meet the contemporary circumstances and conditions that have evolved since the legislation appeared. And I hope you will give uh, Ikaika the opportunity to work with you, uh, not only in this session, but in sessions to come to uh, implement that plan and, and bring it to a successful conclusion on behalf of the beneficiaries. Mahalo. Thank you for your courtesy and indulgence. I appreciate it. And I'll answer any questions if, if there are any. Mahalo, Governor. We'll have questions at the end after the test. Oh, okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much indeed. Aloha. Well, aloha. Um, next, we have Koi Mayor Derek Kawakami in support. He's here. Um, <clears throat> next, we have, we're going to call a bit out of order because she has a flight 
um, Senator Malama Solomon. Thank you, Senator. Yes. Okay. And in support. Yeah, aloha mai, mahalo anui loa for this opportunity. Aloha. aloha. I'm here as a Hawaiian homesteader, and it's in my palapala that I have submitted to you for your consideration. My mother, the late Hula Loea Flora Leo Malama Beamer Solomon, was on the 1951 wait list at the age of 21 years. Later, she became a member of the class action suit known as the Aged Hawaiians versus the state of Hawaii which took the state 20 years to reconcile. 51 years, my mother, at 51 years later, my mother was finally awarded her pastoral lot in Waimea, Hawaii, and she was now at the age of 72. My mother just recently passed away, and my papa's still with me, and he's 97. However, we took occupancy. However, the relationship between the department and my parents was strained. This mo'olelo is a prototype of most homesteaders who are and continue to be in contentious legal relationships with the state of Hawaii, Department of Hawaiian Homelands for the breach of trust to beneficiaries. I'm gonna skip a lot. I, I just gave my mana'o on what had happened because I was viewing all of the uh, uh, hearings that had transpired. And I have come to this conclusion that I believe the nominee's confirmation process has been commandeered by political agendas irrelevant to his ability as a competent administrator for the betterment of conditions for Hawaiian homesteaders and the beneficiaries on the wait list. The complexity of reducing the wait list is addressed by the DHHL strategic plan and to accomplish these objectives plus conforming to the three-year window and working cooperatively with the counties of Oahu, Kauai, Maui, and Hawaii a pol political permitting process, the nominee before you meets those requirements. He is knowledgeable about land use and he has 10 years experience on the City Council of Honolulu, on committees and as chair and chief presiding officer gives him an insight and opportunities to work with the public private sector as public private partners. These skill sets are mandatory to be able to facilitate and resolve arising challenges to the DHHL strategic plan. Furthermore, he represented the City Council of Honolulu on the Hawaii State Association of Counties, whose purpose focused on advocating and lobbying with government sectors, including the mayors of the four counties, to tackle important land use, infrastructure, and public safety issues, all related to a statewide cohesive responsible land use management policy, including zoning, permits, and occupancy. The nominee knows the rudiments of the political community of dynamics needed to reduce the wait list, fulfilling the state's administrative mandates of the Hawaiian Homestead Act. In closing, please note, our Hawaii County Democrat Party District 6 Legislative Subcommittee to DHHL Hawaiian Affairs recommended priorities for the 2023 Hawaii State Legislature, which was approved, 1823 includes, we support Governor Josh Green's appointment of Ikaika Anderson as the Department of Hawaiian Homelands DHHL Chair and actively encourage leadership, legislative leadership and other representatives to please support his confirmation. Please consider this mana'o and pass this nominee out of committee to the floor for a full vote he deserves this opportunity. Make it aloha. Thank you so much, Mahalo. Dr. Solomon. <laughs> okay, I think um, there was someone else with a flight in the back. You could come forward. Yeah. Oh, is that Lou? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lou Favorito. I moved to Makaha. Oh. Yeah. Serious? Oh. <laughs> Hi, aloha, Senators. Um, Luan Mahiki Langford Favorito, Noha Ahoolehua Molokai, Aina Pula Pula. I am here, I flew in special because um, I believe that at this time, Mr. Anderson is not, um, I, I do not, um, I oppose his nomination. Um, watching the hearings with the WAN meetings, watching the um, hearings and with the commissioners, just 
from watching all of that and listening to a lot of it, I do not feel that he is prepared at this time to have that position. And I felt passionate enough about it to fly all the way here from Ho'olehua, Molokai. So I thank you for your time. And any questions for me? If not, I'm going to sit in the back. Aloha, everyone. Mahalo. Great to see you, Ms. Faberito. Mahalo from so far. Is there anyone else that has a flight? Oh, yes, please come forward. Hello, my kako. Chair Shumakuro and Vice Chair Favela. I am Benson Medina. I am the president of the Native Hawaiian Chamber of Hawaii Island, Hui Oihana. Um, I've already submitted written testimony um, on behalf of my chamber, but today I come to represent <clears throat> my mother, Catherine Lena Ala Kahanui Medina, and my seven siblings who have been on the Hawaiian Homes wait list for 200 years combined. Um, <clears throat> I used to work with Ikaika's grandmother, Annie, back in the 80s. So I've known about Ikaika since he was a little boy. So it was no surprise to me, a few days after he was nominated um, by the governor, that he showed up in Hilo to talk to homesteaders and waitlisters in Panaeva. Now, he knew he was going to take, as we call it on the Big Island, cracks from these guys. Um, which he did, but he stood there. He stood there for two hours, standing there, um, took all of our our questions, our comments, our complaints. And what I saw was this: I saw a guy who had respect for us to come down there and listen humbly. I saw a guy who was going to take personal responsibility because he told us, "I work for you guys. My job is to get results for you guys." I saw a guy that was willing to learn because if he didn't have the answer to a question, he said, Uncle, I'm going to get back to you. Um, I saw a guy who was going to work collectively for everybody, that he was going to allow Lima, not just for the beneficiaries that were fortunate enough to get an award, but for all of us that were on the wait list. So Yukaika Anderson has many good qualities, but what he doesn't have, he doesn't have fear. And my mother would call that my maka'u. My Maka'u. And that is a thing that will help Hawaiians and a guy like Ikaika Anderson to bring us home. So I encourage you to approve his nomination and help him to bring us home. Aloha. Thank you so much for making the journey. Aloha. Anyone else that has a flight or an urgent um, need to testify early on? Okay. See, now let me know, though, if anybody has come in late and um, needs that accommodation. We'll be glad to make it. Okay, so next up, um, we have Nani Medeiros, um, Office of Governor um, of Chief of State of Hawaii, in support. Still on my strong support. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so then we're going to go to, um, we have Jay Butai, um, DLIR, in support. We have HPHA in support. Um, State Ahamoku Advisory Commission in support. This Aloha Rocky. Aloha Maika Co Chair Ashnaho Kuro, Vice Chair Kyokulari, I think. Aloha, my name is Ale Aloha Rocky Kalohiva, and I'm speaking on behalf of our testimony, but I just want to give some comments. You have my written testimony, we have our written testimony before you. Um, knowing I knew Ikaika's uh, ohana, um, I think before Ikaika was born, anyway, um, Senator Anderson and my father were great friends in the Republican Party together, um, Hawaiian Civic Clubs together, and I watched Ikaika go. He's grown, his background is a great respect for kupuna, and that really counts. And I watched him on, on all the work he's been doing on, with the council, with the uh, Wamanalo issue, acting for helping the people of Wamanalo when the um, illegal tourism came in on the parks, he was able to find solutions. The homeless um, housing, my grandson worked building those housing in school. But he came all the way from Heia to Wamanalo to go to school to help to build those houses. And he's doing something positive for the community. So I, not much to say, 
Not for Lord to say, because you have a written testimony, all good stuff. Please pass this committee, let him pass this committee and give him a chance because I think he's a man of trust for the people of Hawaii. Mahalo. Mahalo, Ms. Kaluiva. Um, we've got Director Hakim Owen Safi from HPHA on Zoom. I apologize uh, for overlooking you. Mahalo, HPHA, for being here in support. Hello, Chair, members of the committee. Thank you very much for uh, hearing this. Uh, just quickly, we submitted our testimony in strong support. Uh, uh, I've known Akaika Anderson for many years, uh, and what struck me about him is his commitment to housing. Uh, I was further impressed a uh, few days after he was nominated that he reached out to us how we can collaborate and cooperate for the purpose of providing the constituents uh, much needed housing. Uh, ask for your support in this nomination and I thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you um, very much. Um, next we have the Department of Budget and Finance support. Um, Department of um, Business, Economic Development, Tourism, these are all in support. Department of Taxation, um, uh, Major um, Keith Hara, Major General Adjutant, uh, ETS, CIO Doug Murdoch, support. Department of Public Safety. Oh, thank you so much. Department of Agriculture, um, Office of Planning, Sustainable Development, Department of Trans Transportation, um, Michael Formby, City and County of Honolulu. So all support, um, Kauai County Council, Hawaii County Council District 3. And then we have um, Tommy Waters, Councilman, um, Chair of the uh, Honolulu City Council uh, in support. We have um, William Ayla Jr., um, former DHHL Chair um, in opposition. Aloha. Aloha, members of the committee, chair, vice chair. Uh, thank you for um, allowing me to testify. Um, of course, my name is William Aina. Um, I am the husband of a beneficiary who's been on Hawaiian homelands for about 27 years. Potentially, I'm a successor. Um, I think I have some experience to provide some testimony here. I have managed two state departments, probably two of the most controversial state departments in the last 12 years. Um, I, I oppose um, the confirmation of Ikaika Anderson. I have nothing personal, I don't know Ikaika Anderson. What I do know is that the chair of this particular department has to understand clearly what the fiduciary duties to the Hawaiian Homelands Trust is. And clearly, he's not demonstrated that during the two WAM hearings, and he's certainly not demonstrated that in the special commission meeting um, that was held recently. You cannot, you cannot serve, you cannot, you can serve two masters, okay? You can serve the governor, but you also have to serve the trust. And notice I say the trust, I'm not saying beneficiaries, I'm saying the trust, because the trust has to be here for beneficiaries today, tomorrow, and 100 years from now. So I'm not saying beneficiaries. It's really, really important to understand that. And the actions that um, have been demonstrated so far, to me, clearly uh, represent someone who doesn't understand the fiduciary duties. It sometimes means you have to say no to the governor. Many times in my past responsibilities as a director, I have said no to the governors, to this, this governor right here who I love dearly, um, but he's never asked me to do uh, something that would be negative to the trust or the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. Um, to, for this governor to put up in a position where he has to have um, Nani Madaris and Robin Danner provide information to him so that he can provide answers to you, I think is a clear indication of not understanding the trust, not the trust responsibilities, the fiduciary responsibilities, as well as the job. The job is super complex. You have many masters. You also have the federal government that's a master that looks over your shoulder all the time. 
Um, the special commission meeting was very painful for me to watch because you had a commission that clearly was perturbed, um, disturbed, disturbed, I would say, because they felt that their, um, their authority had been, and I'm saying this nicely, nicely has, had been misrepresented. So there was no deviation from the plan, even with the, there's no deviation from the spend plan and the strategic plan. That's not what they authorized. And yet he led the committee of many of you which were there to believe that there was. Right? You have to have integrity. Um, firing Cedric Dwork. Even if a governor had told me to fire Cedric Dort, I would have said no. He fired me first. That guy was so loyal to the department and had such great skills. And even people that didn't like the message that he was delivering liked him. You cannot get a PIO officer or an ICRO officer like that off the street. Bad move. Super, super bad move. Again, listening to the governor not filling your fiduciary duty to make sure that the department and the trust is represented in the most positive, most efficient, and most complete way. It's clear it wasn't transparent during the WAM meetings because he didn't have the answers, but you know what? The staff behind him had the answers. All he had to do was turn to the staff, which leads me to another reason why I'm in opposition. You cannot have two staffs. You cannot have your staff and the department staff. It can only be one staff. And I told Ikaiko when I had two hours to brief him on what I think would be positive for him to move forward was to trust the DHHL staff. Trust the guys that have the institutional memory for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Because they're gonna tell you, here's what we tried and here's why it didn't work, so we don't waste our time trying it again and putting in jeopardy the $600 million that sits before us, a historic $600 million appropriation from the legislature in general funds with three years to spend it and almost one year has gone by. Um, it's the longer you wait for the governor to come down with the plan, the greater the opportunity of losing that money. And I know I'm short on time, uh, Chair, so if I could just um, wrap up. Uh, I'm not sure how the Senate can confirm him with his um, over-reliance on the governor and not fulfilling his fiduciary duties to the Hawaiian Homes Commission Trust. Um, I'm not sure how he can uh, indicate to a developer that he's going to provide $9 million in the HASDA funding when, in fact, he's only authorized to move $1 million, up to $1 million in the budget for the commission's uh, delegation. So he's got to go back to the commission. And he doesn't understand that the commission is the authority. The governor can appoint him. The governor can appoint commissioners. And the governor can adjust the budget. Everything else is the duty of the commission. And it's set up that way so that we don't get what happened 30, 40, 50 years ago with DHHL lands being transferred out, resulting in the legislature having to do Act 14. Let's not repeat that again. Let's, let's not put a person in a position where he pays too much attention to the governor and not enough attention to the trust. And I do hope that if by some chance that you, you, he has the votes, that he understands the trust responsibilities and not be a puppet to the governor. And so with that, I apologize if I offended you, um, but that's my feeling. It's based on 12 years of, of taking cracks too. And I understand what that's like. So thank you very much. That's my testimony and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mahalo, Skyla. We'll have uh, questions at the end All right. for Mr. Fires. Thank, thank you. you very much. Next we have um, Ann Kobayashi, former lawmaker in support. Tato Po, former lawmaker in support. Douglas Chin, former Attorney General, in support. Okay, we're gonna move on. Oh, Kyle um, Kai E. Kahele, former Congressman, in support. 
Fred Hemmings, former lawmaker in support. Ernie Martin, for former lawmaker in support. Okay, we're gonna move to the organizations now. Let's see. Okay. We have um, Stanford Car Development in support. Um, Ho Monopono LLC support. They'll be followed by Hawaiian Community Development Board. Okay. Hello, my Kako. My name is Demon Mana Ole now. Since I got married to my beautiful wife, Aiko, I was able to change my name and took my grandpa's name because I am a Mana Ole. I was never raised by Kana. Um, so I submitted my testimony already and I dropped off to everyone except for Kirk because his office was closed, but I put it over there for you, Brother Kirk. Um, Documentation that shows, um, one, our petition that we were able to do, uh, was able to get um, close to 60 names to be able to support Ikaika. Um, that's in direct uh, um, opposition to Kurt's um, petition, which is um, about 45 people that signed his petition on change.org as of this morning. But you know, I gotta tell you this, um, I like Kurt. And when Kurt get into trouble, I'm gonna be there to support him too. And, um, but we believe in Nikaiko. We believe that he should be there because it is the weak listers who's never been consulted. When the commission said that they consulted the beneficiaries in, the rec in their own records on their DHHL's own page, you're gonna be able to see only 300 people was consulted. Most of it was all homestead um, uh, leaders and not beneficiaries We get 20,000 of us waiting. My mother died on the list after 30 years in 1995. I don't want to be the second generation to die. So I just ask that you put somebody in a place like Ikaika who going to pay attention to the wait listers. I know Isla said it's about the trust, but the trust would never exist if it wasn't for us beneficiaries. So I ask that you consider us the beneficiaries, the ones who are on the wait list, 20,000 of us, never was consulted about 600 million. And I thank you for that. My wife can speak. Aloha, everybody. Aloha. So just so you all know, I, I don't testify just because that's my husband, too, because we agree to disagree on many things. <laughs> and, um, and I also think that that's what everyone can do also. Many people might disagree with Ikaika, and I can only vouch for what I saw of him or see of him now. So since, since he was appointed, all I've seen is him going out into the community. He's listening to people. He's asking them what they want. He's talking to the beneficiaries. And to me, it's simple. Isn't that the point? You know what I mean? It's not complicated. It's the media will twist all kinds of things. And I've been at places with Ikaika, and then I've seen it on media and YouTube and all that. And people twist their own story on it. And I'm just confused because I'm like, that's not even what happened. That's not what he said. That's what you want him to the people to think, right? So when when Isla says too that you know it's all about the trust, what good is the trust if you don't help the Hawaiians? It to me it doesn't seem complicated. He's willing to learn, he's not perfect, but neither are any of us or any of you. We've all done things in the past. I mean it's kind of ridiculous. You don't judge McDonald's for how they make their hamburgers based on what you see at Jack in the Box. You know what I mean? Give him a chance, teach him. He's willing to learn, he's willing to grow, and he wants to help the people. That's it. It's, that's the point. <laughs> help Hawaiian people. Thank yeah. you. And the last thing I want to show you this picture right here. He came to the Waianae Council, the Kupuna Council. I have never seen none of you leaders, any leader, crouch down to take words from a kupuna whenever they're out there in the community. This is Ikeka Anderson talking to our kupuna, not in a position of authority, but as a servant to his kupuna. This is the man that Ikeka is. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo, Pa. Hawaiian Community Development Board in support. And they will be followed by Hui Mahi Aina. Aloha, Kali. 
Aloha. Good afternoon, Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Kali Watson, and I'm here to testify in support of the Kaika. Uh, Demont the, the kind of mentioned that uh, meeting he had with the 50 beneficiaries out in Waianae. I was there with him, and I have to say, you know, the guy, uh, he was there to hear what these individuals had to say and responded in a very positive and uh, receptive way, trying to look for solutions. And I think that's the challenge with this particular trust is, uh, you know, he's, he's not necessarily the perfect candidate, but uh, what I noticed about him is he has a willingness to learn and uh, go from there. Uh, obviously, the staff is going to be a very important part of his uh, efforts to try and uh, deal with the uh, $600 million. And so in the short time that I've met with him and try to give him a developer perspective on the use of the funding, uh, it was very clear to me that he was very open to uh, hearing how the funds could be leveraged, how other funding sources could be incorporated in order to build more than the 2700 that they're looking at under the strategic plan that was adopted. You know, when he talks about revisions, I don't think he's uh, necessarily talking about doing away with the 20 projects that are identified in that strategic plan. He's looking to expand on it. And I think the first act that he did was put out an RFP in which uh, he's looking at five different projects that will result in over, you know, 600 new units or new lands. So I think the important thing is that you have an individual that wants to learn, that is very, very accessible, not only to the beneficiaries, but to the people that can make things happen. So I would say that uh, he's the guy to really move the program forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Watson. Let's see. Um, Hui Mahi Aina, Angie Blanche, McMillan, in support? Yes. Uh, support. Support. Yes. yes. I'm Blanche McMillan. I am the CEO for the Hui Mahi Aina Homeless Shelter in Waimanalo. I am so proud to be here to testify for my Ikata Anderson. He has been there for me from day one when I first started the homeless shelter. It was so unreal. He was there to love our people and he showed what his ohana is all about. And this is why his parents showed him what is love and what is support to be there for the people. And this is why I'm here today. I have my people here from Hui Mahi Ai. I have nine of them to support Ikata Anderson because he has done a great job for us. We have been through a lot. My mom and dad, they're in Waimanawa, they had a homestead in 1948, and we come from a family of 17, nine brothers and eight sisters. Because I became what I am today is because of the growing up of my parents. My parents really love the Lord, and today I walk with the Lord to do the things that has to be done today. And we need to all work together and be supported with one another and to support the love that comes from our heart. And this is why I'm here today. And I thank you very much. Mahalo Noi. Thank you so Hello. much. All you do. Um, Koalao Foundation in support. Thanks, Mahalani. And they'll be followed by the Anahola Hawaiian Homes Association. Aloha. I used to work with Whitney Anderson when he was a legislator here at the Capitol years ago. So I know him a long time. And I have known um, Ikaika from when he worked at the council under Barbara Marshall, who hired me as city clerk at one time. So I knew Ikaika from that time when he was a staffer. And then afterwards, he ran for Barbara's seat when she passed away. So I've known him and observed him for many years. He is, you know, there's, there's other candidates people are tossing around suggesting for this position. And maybe they have some skills and maybe they have some attributes that you prefer. But I think that this man has spent many years listening to all the challenges that developments go through. He has actually had to vet projects and developments for many years at the city council. And that's a tough job. I don't know if you've ever watch those those planning committee meetings and they were hard so were the council meetings the 
as chair, he had to deal with that. So I think that there are some good people out there that might qualify for this position. But I think Ikaika's got the most um, kind of hands-on training in the sense that he had to deal with the challenges. And to me, this the big projects ahead for DHHL is going to be a challenge. We all want those projects to succeed. We all want our people to be housed. We want housing for the people on the wait list. I think we all agree on that. So let's try to see if this man can make it happen for us. And uh, we urge you to support him. Thank you. Mahalo, Mahalo. Okay. Anahola Hawaiian Homes Association support. So we have the Waimea Hawaiian Civic Club support. Keone o Kapuhi Heva, Council of the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, Oahu support. Let's see. Um, Pu Honua, BKB Kanahele support. Aloha. And let's see. He'll be followed by Imanaka Asato. Oh, hi, aloha mai. Aloha. Aloha. Um, aloha Chair Shimabukuru, uh, Vice Chair Favela, and committee members. Um, my name is Pu'omua Dennis Bumpik on Ahele, Head of State of the Nation of Hawaii. Um, I am testing, <clears throat> testifying before you this afternoon to ex express my strong support for Ikaika Anderson as director of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. I've known him, Ikaiko, for many years, and I can attest to his dedication, commitment, and passion for serving the people of Hawaii. As a resident and beneficiary of the Waimanalo Homestead community, I've witnessed Ikaiko's unwavering commitment to serving the people in our community. Throughout his years as a civil servant, Ikaika has shown him himself to be a highly capable and competent leader. He's young. That's what it is. He's young, dedicated in improving the lives of those he serves. Um, as a resident, uh, I've also, you know, he was, uh, I known him for a long time. I got from Waimanalo. I know him for Whitney and his grandparents for a long time. Governor. Nice to see you. But Ikaika is is uh, he needs he needs a shot at this. Because plenty of people believe in him. Really needs a shot at this. I don't get maybe uh, opposition in in you know in the past it wasn't ever any good anyway. Maybe it's because it was focused too much on the trust and not the beneficiaries. And I think this way he can come and play a big part in it. And uh, at least I'm one of them will hold them accountable to that. So thank you. Thank you for letting me have this time to talk. Hello. Mahalo, Bumpy. Thank you. Imanaka Asato in support. Um, Keotaha Paneeva Farmers Association in support. If anybody's on Zoom, just um, um, shout out. Wamanala Neighborhood Board Number 32, Opposition. Um, Molokai Homesteaders, Opposition. Are they on Zoom? Hold on. Zoom, okay, so then. T. George Paris, Opposition. Um, Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, Support. Mahalo, Mahalo Nat, well, they'll be followed by the Bricklayer and Allied Craft Workers. Uh, Chair and the members of the committee, Nathaniel Kinney, Hawaii Regional Council of Carpenters, in support of Ikaika Anderson. Uh, Ikaika comes from a family of dedicated public servants and has demonstrated a passion and commitment to serve the people of Hawaii. He has a history of making tough housing decisions as the zoning chair of the Honolulu City Council with the passage of Ho'opili and Coal Ridge. And he did a decent enough job that his fellow council members elected him chair. We believe his experience with county issues such as infrastructure, entitlements, planning and permitting would be helpful to the department to allocate and spend the $600 million to build housing for Hawaiians. Uh, we humbly ask for your support of his nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kinney. 
we have the brick, um, International Union of Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers um, in support. And then he'll be followed by the um, Hana Laulima Lahui Okabu Grassroots. Aloha, Jenny. Jeremy. Aloha. Okay. Yes, it, yes. Yeah. Real fast, um, on behalf of uh, Mel Silva and Local One of Hawaii Bricklayers, um, we just <clears throat> want to show strong support. Um, just what we know of Ikaika from just his dedication and his hard work and what he's done in you know, public you know, service, we strongly support Ikaika. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, Hana Lalima Lahui, Oka'u Grassroots support. Um, Royal Contracting support. Um, I did see Representative Jean Ward. Were you here to testify or just to observe? Uh, she's it's a witness, madam. Thank okay. You for acknowledging. Mahalo, mahalo for, mahalo for attending. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Um, next, we have the um, Elmer Ka'ai with comments. Wallace Ishibashi in support. Okay, now we're going to go to individuals. Um, Ivan Lui Kwan, support. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, mahalo, Ivan. Uh, and he'll be followed by Kavehi Korea. <laughs> I'm in support. Um, I'm Omai Kako. Aloha. Ch Chair Sumabukura, Vice Chair Favela, members of the, of, of the committee. My name's Ivan Lui Kwan. Mahalo Nui for the opportunity to provide testimony in support of the confirmation of Ikaika Anderson. It's my firm belief that Ikaika will do an excellent job as director of DHHL and chair of the Hawaiian Homes Commission, if confirmed. Um, my belief is based on a number of factors. One is I work fairly closely with beneficiary leaders on the west side of Oahu, and we believe that Ikaika has the passion as has been demonstrated by prior testimony for improving the lives of the beneficiaries of the Hawaiian Homelands Trust. Second, as chair of city council and as a member of city, city council, I've observed him from when he was working for Barbara Marshall as a, as a council member. And he has the public policy skills um, and leadership to do this job. Uh, when he was chair, he was always fair he conducted the council meetings with with dignity and with skill, and he showed excellent judgment on really tough public policy issues. From what I've seen him over the past 14 years grow as a public official, it's clear to me that he is highly qualified, competent, honest, and he lives a law. As a native Hawaiian, I believe it's important to support Native Hawaiian leaders who are highly qualified, competent, honest, and live aloha, and who have offered themselves, invested their lives to, to improve the well being of our people. I think Ikaika has all these qualities and he's committed to improve the lives of our people. And I ask that you confirm his, his nomination. Mahalo Nui for allowing me to provide this testimony. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lu Kwan. Um, Kavehi Korea in support. Um, KDEW Skippy Iwani, support. Aina Aloha Iwani, support. Juanita Kaumaro Brown, aloha. support. Yes, Aloha. Sorry, um, Dan is with me too. Uh, oh, Aloha. Skippy. I'm gonna go first and then and then Dan. Okay, oh, mahalo, Ms. Iwani. Okay. Um, Aloha, my name is Aina Aloha Iwane, and I am in support of the confirmation of Ikaika Anderson. I was born in Waikaalulu on the Aina Pula Pula of King's Landing. I and my siblings were given as tribute to the strengthening of our Lahui. As a child, I didn't know the struggles of my parents, my aunties, and of our Maha community. Dad has tried for over 39 years, has asked nine chairmen for the settlement of King's Landing. We at King's Landing have been ignored for the greater part of my exi existence. With the help of the previous chairman, Chairman Isla, the Provisional Investigative Committee of King's Landing, King's Landing finally approved 
for King's Landing to go through its homesteading process. And we mahalo them for this opportunity. I believe that Ikaika as chairman will continue to support our King's Landing settlement. Ikaika graciously joined us at King's Landing last week Friday. He is the first chairman to come and visit us at home in our village to listen to our stories of successful rehabilitation and to our current concerns. As my papa said, Ikaika Anderson is a new solution to an old problem. I would like to end my testimony by reading the names of support from our Maha members. Uh, I was able to collect 16 signatures from our, uh, from our village. Uh, Kili Iskipi Iowane, my mother Carol Iowane, uh, my sister Ha'avino Wise, Kiahialaka Iowane, Kili Ikanaka Ole Iowane, Serena Laimana, Uncle Herman Costa, John Waipa, Lehuanani Ange, Ali Iloa Waipa, La Akea Waipa, Wason Iowane, Kekua Burgess, Anella Burgess, and Kevin Kahikina. Uh, mahalo nui for this opportunity, and here's Dad. Mahalo. Oi, Miley. Hey, aloha, Muskipi. Good morning, everybody. Good uh, morning, like my daughter was saying, eh? Hey, Kurt, how are you? <laughs> you know what? You know I go support um, uh, Ikaika. Because uh, I, I seen the political uh, uh, oil, not Isla now, the political oil of slippery. <laughs> You know the slippery <laughs> politics. They get slippery. Jeez, that, geez, yeah. And but the, the thing is, while uh you bring whether the commissioner is qualified or not, do you know doing nothing is not hard for do. You know, <laughs> accomplishing almost nothing. I don't think you need a college education for do nothing. You know what I mean? So when I look at the commissioners come and go. But the first one I went go start getting active was Billy Bima. Billy Bima was the commissioner. But I seen them come and go, come and go. I seen governors come and go, and stories come and go. But if you do the same thing over and over, you know what um, Andy Bumatai say? You cannot make baby like this. <laughs> you know. So if we like magic, if we like make magic. We, we gotta get it up and get it in. What I mean is, if Ikaika, if, you know, as long as you know that, and our village is not part of Shaw. Mm -hmm. You know, we know it's accepted by them, mm -hmm. so after that we figure we don't like be part of them. Yeah. So, yeah. with Ikaika, I'm hoping that because this puppy is fresh, <laughs> we're not going to get caught by the, the, the pollution that uh, the, the, the government in uh, the state of Hawaii, because we're always in conflict with the blood quantum of the Hawaiian kingdom in our veins. And the land ownership. We're gonna always be in conflict with the state. So I hope that somebody young, like Ikaika, because he came out of village. And what he uh he get ha ha. He humble, he humble himself before us. Like my daughter said, every time you talk to the commissioners, they get cocky. You know what I mean? So we and we hope that he don't want to be the governor's go, you know. No, no, only go up to the governor. He has a boss. He has a boss. Like one thing with the Isla say, if the governor wrong, Anderson got to tell him. Okay, cousins, I love you guys. Goodbye. Mahalo. Monica Kawamoro Brown, support. Um, we have uh, Craig Bo Kahui. So are you in support? And he will be followed by Shelby Billionaire. <laughs> uh, my name is Craig Paul Kahui. I reside in Kona at the villages of Laiopua. Um, I've heard uh, quite a bit of testimony. I want to make the record straight. Um, we met and I was at the meeting in Panea when Taika Anderson came to Hilo. And I drove from Kona to Hilo to find out who he was. And he is exactly as everyone has expressed.
humble, passionate. You know, we believe he has the experience to move this department forward. We pro provided him our resolution with regard water source development in Kona. For seven years on the Isla, nothing has happened. It was three weeks to the day we found out that our water source development is going to go through for Kona. And now we can build out 400 to 600 homes. That's what you need. No more water, no more homes. It's bottom line. So we agree with others that Ikaika has even maybe the vision can see through all of the, the minutia and get this stuff done. Because it doesn't take seven years to get a water agreement with a landowner and deliver, I think, what's important. Um, having said that, uh, I am in full support, along with the members of my board, of uh, the Laiupu Community Development Corporation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, Shelby Billionaire, opposition. Yes, and he's followed by Councilman Tarapo, who is here. All right, hello everyone. Thank you for having us here. I represent the King of the Hawaiian Post Office. We do have our own stamps. We represent our country, Kohawai Paiaina, not the state of Hawaii, which is a fictitious corporation. So growing up, no one taught me about the Great Mahele, our rural crown patent lands that you can find at the Dealer Building across the street. Pearl Harbor is our rural patent 2243, Makaos 2242. When he came to visit his, uh, he came to our meeting in Hawaiian and local Kapuna Council. Uh, thank you for that. And I want to watch the Ways and Means Committee because there have been a lot of real estate developers. I joined Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, Nuvo Reach, and all these companies to do real estate development, cash flow, vertical construction, multifamily. The cap rate is very understandable for cash flow when you have a 100 unit building, charge some cheap rent, $700. Where does the money go to? Is it going to go to DHHL? Is it going to go to the developer? Or is it going to go to the Hawaiian people? Now, when you talk to the beneficiary outreach program, some of their staff, and ask for more details, and they asked me if I'm a beneficiary. According to the blood quantum, I am not. So whatever everyone's promising, all these antiques, uncles, kapuna behind me, I'm grateful for them. But according to their logic, I get squat. Zero. My nieces, my nephews, all your grandchildren are going to the schools. Now, we're not going to get nothing. When you graduate out of high school, if you're in Colorado, Tennessee, you can get a 20% down payment and have a house. It's a very reasonable plan, and you can afford a place to live. Currently, with their plan, their strategic plan, the five-point vision plan makes no stinking sense. You will not be able to afford a home. You'll be in debt and poverty forever. And rentals is not the answer. I know ADUs is a great way, but when I smell Slick Rick, and that's the vibe I get from Ikaika, no offense, but he's going to promise you everything but not be able to answer your questions, especially when you get professional real, real development going down. He doesn't answer the questions for the chair of how they're going to deviate from the plan and change it. They don't want to admit to it, and it feels all like Kukai to me. It's just straight up. I want to see a reasonable plan with a marketing plan, your cash flow statement. What's the return on investment? What's the basic ROI? For how many units you're going to build? When are you going to do it by? Obviously, you've got four years to make a choice and just be straight and be simple and be raw. I don't feel like he has it yet. He may have the potential, but I feel like you should find someone that's more qualified. He can still be in DHHL, just not as the chair. Thank you. Mahalo, Shelby. Next, former councilman, Tarapo. Welcome. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. Uh, apologize for my tardiness. I oh, no instead I missed my first call, so thank you for this opportunity. I am here to, to testify in support of Ikaika Anderson. Um, I think as most of you know, uh, was with him at the council. I was able to experience with him both when he was a staff member for Council Member Marshall as well as when he became a council member. Um, you know, as you look at this position, we all know, right? You've heard it all. You guys know you've been living it. Tough solutions, tough situations. You need someone who can lead through it. Um, from what my experience is, what I've seen, having known probably a number of the uh, previous DHHL chairs and know what they go through, could currently work with one of the previous chairs. You need someone who can listen, but not but listen at all levels. Meaning, listen to the community, listen to the Hawaiians, listen to those that are on the land, listen to those who are on the wait list, but also listen to those who can bring the solutions from government, uh, those that sit in your seats those in the development world that actually build the homes, 
you got to listen to that spectrum. And that's something that I believe Ikaika has developed the skill and experience for um, with his time on council. And as you all sit here and know in the work that you do, after you listen, you have to make decisions. And he's shown the ability to do that, do that as well. Um, as my work with him, I always trust him for his word. We could go in and have discussions correctly under Sunshine Law, um, but I disagree at times. But I knew he was listening with an open mind, and at times he would change his mind based on our discussion. But also, he wasn't afraid of saying, you know, his position to me and where he was going to be. And I knew that when we got to decision making, that's where he was going to be. And I think that's the type of leader that is needed. Uh, to take advantage of the opportunities that are here for the department, uh, for the Hawaiian community, and move forward. So I'm here in support of his appointment and hope that you will uh, look at that favorably. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilman Um Thank you. Um, we have David Louie, the former State Attorney General, uh, in support. Um, Dr. Kenny Fink, um, in support. We've got um, Commissioner Pauline Namuo, support. Um, let's see. Um, Ilima Di Costa, opposition. Shirley Swinney. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Hello, hello. I'm sorry. Yes, Ms. Di Costa, yes, sorry. Kalamai, I've been waiting for a little while. I gotta okay, go I'm back sorry. to work. Kalamai, I just wanted to stand um, on my testimony in opposition of this particular nominee. I kako'o the testimony that was submitted by the former chair. And I wanted to uh, make two points and a rhetorical question. The two points are um, uh, lack of business acumen, which is really, really important for this, um, this particular position, uh, the lack of a temperament that's necessary for this position, and where in the world is Ikaika's wife? So that's what I want to know, because I really am concerned about oh, his oh, oh, Mahalo. Mahalo, Mr. Costa. Um, Shirley Swinney, opposition. Sure. And, and she'll be followed by Homilani Shadel. Hello, Chair. Hello, Shalom Bakura, Vice Chair for Bella and committee members. So um, I don't know uh, nominee Anderson, but I'm so I was glad to sit here this morning and listen to all the previous testifiers before me. And I have no doubt that what they testified to is what they know. So what I'm testifying to is what, what I know. And I know what I saw in the last several weeks here before the various Senate committees when DHHL prepared their presentations. And that, from what I saw at both of those presentations, before the, sen the Senate committees um, on Ways and Means and this Hawaiian Affairs Committee, who um, actually continued the matter for a second chance for DHHL to come before the committee and fully explain themselves more clearly. And that didn't happen. For a beneficiary like me to listen to that, it was embarrassing. I felt embarrassed for the department. I felt embarrassed for us. So I have to, I've never spoken before at a confirmation. I just felt it was important to die, today to speak to this. And I have to, um, regrettably give you my strong opposition to this nomination. Yeah. Mahalo for the opportunity to voice my strong opposition. My name is Shirley Swinney Kapule, Homestead Beneficiary since 2001. DHHL is at a most critical time in its history given the $600 million legislative appropriation from Act 279. Yet with the bounty of funding, to, for DHHL, there is a shortage of confidence and trust in DHHL. If at any time in its history, DHHL requires transparent and decisive leadership, leadership with short-term goals and long-term vision to cultivate an environment of strategic planning, effective management, and beneficiary engagement, the leadership I describe is currently not present at DHHL. My opposition comes from observing DHHL recent presentations before Senate committees and from hearings before the Hawaiian Homes Commission. Under the direction of this, the current nominee, confusion reigned over clarity. During hearings before Senate committees, DHHL report and explanation was obscure and dreadfully failed 
to demonstrate a clear, concise plan, especially around current budget requests and expending Act 279 appropriation. The HHL staff appeared restrained and tentative as persons outside the HHL were called upon to explain a plan to deviate on expending Act 279 funds. Further, at HHC meetings, several commissioners com commented in support of the strategic plan, which was vetted and approved by them, and any deviation from that plan was contrary to their intent. From a beneficiary's perspective, there can be no support for any leadership that would have DHHL descend to disarray and confusion. I humbly and respectfully ask to end the disorder and ambiguity and to please bring transparent leadership to DHHL. Mahalo. Mahalo, Ms. Winnie. Oh. Omilani Shadel, opposition. And she'll be followed by Kupua Kili'i Kolokamai. Hello, Mr. Chair Shumabukuro, Vice Chair Favela, and members of the committee. I'm Homilani Shadel, a beneficiary residing in Kapolei and an advocate for the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, 1920. On January 17 and 18, Chair Designate Ikaika Anderson misled the commissioners in approving his one page, five point conceptual plan. I personally testified at both commission meetings, and they did not vote to allow the chair designate to deviate from the Act 279 strategic plan, which was submitted to the legislature. On January 19, 2023, it was distressing and disappointing to watch the chair designate's second attempt in responding to questions from Chair De La Cruz and members of the Ways and Means Committee. It was painful to see him floundering like a fish out of water and lying to the committee saying the commission allowed this administration to deviate from the existing plan. Although Mr. Anderson had Department of Hawaiian Homeland staff from every division to assist him, ultimately it was the governor's appointed director of housing who came to the table to assist him in explaining his submittal to the committee who stated the administration would look for other funding to develop lots and the 600 million would be used to construct homes as part of their vision, which deviates and puts Act 279 strategic plan and funding approved by the commission at risk. To this point, the purpose of the HHCA is clearly defined in section 101B2, placing native Hawaiians on the land set aside under this act. Purpose four, providing adequate amounts of water and supporting infrastructure. That is exactly what Act 279 strategic plan addresses. In the first 10 days of entering DHHL, Mr. Anderson terminated a key staff member without cause other than to appease the governor's office. Unfortunately, in the past 42 days, Mr. Anderson has not displayed integral qualities necessary of a leader for the chair of the Hawaiian Homes Commission and director of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. The Hawaiian Homes Commission and the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, and most importantly, all of our beneficiaries need a leader who is transparent, has integrity, morals, and stands on a foundation of ethical principles, all of which Mr. Anderson has not displayed. On January 25th at the special commission meeting, I commented to Mr. Anderson, the chair he was seated in is very sacred to me. And when he sits in that chair below the portrait of our prince, he needs to lead the commission. When he sits in the director's chair, he leads the staff and he needs to lead us, the beneficiaries. But first, he needs to stand on his own two feet to be kina ole and pono. My final statement was, you have from now until your confirmation to prove to me that you can stand on your own two feet. If you are unable to, I cannot support your confirmation. Senators, 
you know far well that DHHL is at a pivotal point in our history. Many of you have held your seats for more than a decade. It will be up to you and the Senate as a whole to determine the fate of our beneficiaries and the very continuity and existence of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act of 1920. I charge and hold each of you responsible as a beneficiary of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act to be thoughtful in your deliberation, absent of any political or personal relationship, and make the right choice for our beneficiaries. Please know, I take no pleasure in discrediting a person in public. But today, my choice is easy. I choose our beneficiaries over supporting confirmation of Ikaika Anderson. Mahalo for allowing me to share my manao. Thank you very much, Mr. Dell. Thank you. Kapua Kili Kamai, opposition, and she'll be followed by Kapua Maderos. Aloha, Awinala. Aloha. Aloha, Kapua Kili Kamai. Makaaina ho o pula pula ka awa wa wainai mai au. I am very disheartened to not speak ill of this man who many people have given positive reviews and uh, credit him with. However, I stand in strong opposition of this confirmation. And it's not so much of him, but it's what I fear that's being pressed upon him. And I believe it's been mentioned earlier that there are external powers at play that are causing him to make decisions that a director of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands, the Hawaiian Homes Commission Chair, should not be making. And only if you know the act, know the act well, would you know that. For me, I really had my ano, but I wanted to give him a fair shot. When I had opportunity to speak to him one-on-one, -on -one, I did. And he's been honest and forthright. He's acknowledged some of his missteps, but we cannot afford a misstep, not a single one, in this time right now especially because of the $600 million from Act 279. We are in a crucial time of change, of reducing that wait list, which can only be accomplished by giving a lease that will eventually result in a home. It may start off with just the land, with or without infrastructure, and everything will be vertical, as in above ground. I respect him. However, I do have questions, but I don't blame Ikaika. I look to what put him in this position. The Department of Hawaiian Homelands is an independent department. It is only a department because of a federal act that we all know. So the governor's job is to find the right person for the job. And then they should release all strings, nothing connected to that individual in their capacity. But that is not what is occurring right now has been already shared. That's not occurring. So to Governor Josh Green, who I also supported, release the strings. Upon him, if he survives, or upon the next nominee, because any nominee that's gonna serve someone other than someone that knows the act and who they serve, which is the beneficiaries. So fortunately, we have nine of them that make the decision. But this director, every director steers that va'a. And if they don't know where they're going, or the proper way to go, which stars to look at, 
which is the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, not Governor Green, not anyone in his office, not his senior policy analyst, not his housing analyst. They work. Our department works with these people. Our department does not work for them. That's the distinction between a director and a commissioner. Please, please make the right decisions. Mahalo. 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 Yeah. Papua Madero's opposition will be followed by William Kanekui. Aloha, Aloha Chair Shimon Bukuro and uh, Vice Chair uh, Vivilla and members of the Hawaiian Affairs Committee, um, as well as uh, I am yeah, here in opposition of the confirmation of Ikaika Anderson. Um, I have some points that I submitted on my written testimony, um, and I would like to share them quickly. Uh, the Hunana Needhold Development Plan was Anderson's project, but when community had strong opposition and voiced concerns, he was unavailable and said it was the mayor's kuleana. Anderson used his kupuna as an excuse to step down from the city council, yet a few weeks later, we found out he accepted a job with a local union. Anderson showed that he was not fully familiarized with his own plan to head the Department of Hawaiian Homelands during Senate hearings. As seen in the Senate WAM Hawaiian Committee hearings, Anderson is not prepared to handle the kuleana of DHHL director. Um, on more than one instance, he made statements and then shortly thereafter made statements that were contradictory to those statements. He and Nani Maderos. It's all on recording. It's not on social media. It's on a recorded Hawaiian Affairs meeting. As of yet, there has been no DG Joe Commission public hearings for beneficiaries to have their questions answered. There were there was a meeting which I attended where you could voice your opinion, but you couldn't get any questions answered. And during that meeting, as I testified, I was told more than once, more than twice, that I need to hurry it up. The DHHL commission, commissioners confirmed that they never agreed to deviate from their plan as stated by Anderson, and that was um, that he stated in the Hawaiian and WAM committee hearings. When asked why a beneficiary should have to settle for a vertical unit, uh, Anderson said, any home above ground is a vertical unit. I've never heard that any home referred to as a vertical unit before. Um, just today, someone shared with me the Shaw. I attended a few years ago in Waimanalo, a Shaw meeting, and everything sounded at that meeting like it was following the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act. But today, this same literature has different wording. And the wording is made to fit the plan of the Act 279 funding. The Shaw has their own plan versus the DHHL plan. And I'm not sure when the Shaw became the um, the governing or the, the the vehicle that makes choices for Department of Hawaiian Homelands. I am very concerned. I would also like to share, I know you called um, our Waimanala Neighborhood Board earlier and uh, Kimiana was not able to attend, I'm sure, but I would like to share with you that we had a lot of discussion last night at our board, at our board meeting, which I sit as a member of, because our Kuana Ike Hawaii Committee, which is looking at everything through a Hawaiian perspective, not through an American perspective, but through a true Hawaiian perspective, 
And that committee recommended that our neighborhood board number 32 oppose Ikeka Anderson's confirmation. And we voted to oppose it. So we passed that last night. And I just want you to understand that I've heard so many people today testify about how they know Anderson all their life. So have I known him for a long time. I grew up in Waimanalo as well. I was coming to the legislature as a young parent supporting Hawaiian language immersion program where there were only one or two schools. And I was fighting for um, time and time again to get funding for things like transportation and just meals and stuff like that, that our children have a right to. And Ikaiko was there as a young uh, legislative intern maybe. Uh, so I've known Ikaiko Anderson as well. My mom is friends with his family. But that doesn't mean that just because we're friendly that he's qualified. That doesn't mean that he didn't lie in the Hawaiian WAM Senate hearings. It's recorded. So I would just like to leave that as it is. And I, as well, like Kapua Kili, Koa Kama'i, would not like to do ill will to anyone, but I need to call it as I see it. And these are the facts. This is not how I feel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Majerus. Aloha. Aloha. William Kaneko, support. Victor Ramos, support. Nadine Ando, support. I hope names on Zoom. Um, Stan Pittman. Oh, hello, support. Um, okay, Marion Kapuniai, support. Um, Paul Shinkawa, support. Tamaki Kanehele, support. Um, Barbara Dalton, support. William Kapaku Jr., support. Therese Castillo, support. Michael Vincent, support. Actually, these are all support. Um, Micah Alameda, Ken Farm, I think I saw earlier, support. Yes. And he'll be followed by Jordan Lowe. I'm chair, sure members of the committee. My name is Ken Farm. Um, I am uh, testifying in support. Uh, one of the things when we're looking at from just a development standpoint and just in general is the relationship between county, state, and the federal government when it comes to the different levers of government. And being in that county position for that while, that's something I think that's very important, especially when we look at things like federal opportunity zones and the types of money and levers for which can be pulled from there uh, from the U.S. Department of Commerce. Second thing, too, is we're looking at things like rentals, new market tax credits. I know some people are against that, but in some cases, we have to also consider there's people who are older who may not qualify for mortgages. They may not qualify for mortgages because they're too old to qualify for a mortgage. So the next other thing is rentals. So we have to think about things in different manners. And what I and I understand that we've had a lot of people who, you know, when we had the first WAM meeting, the special committee and things like that, of a plan that was already there and then trying to see what we can do within the six months time uh, of what was going on. But we have to think in new, new different ways. So one of the things I also wanted to bring out too was the ability to just ask questions. I think what you guys do up here too is if you need something, you try to ask questions of individuals and see you know, what is it that that person may have or if they're bringing up a testimony or whatever to kind of get to the heart of things. So likewise with any commissioner or any person in leadership, that's the kind of thing that I see. But the other part too is, and as it grows into this, is knowing the right places in order to get the right answers. So with that, I stand in support. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Farr. Um, Jordan Lowe, support. These are all support. Um, Dylan Armstrong, Ralph Hasegawa, Lisa Grove, Ray St. Chu, Kerry Lee Shibuya, Marlene Sarau, George A. Red Morris, William Oku, um, Gary Nakata, um, Jesse K, Keikoa Inomoto, Keith Riggin, Dwayne Fisher, uh, Christopher Michael Flattery, 
Chuck, oh, this is opposition. Um, Dr. Chuck Prentice, right? Um, Charles Chang, they're all opposition. Andrew Crossland, Tammy Gumban, Dana Keave. If you're on Zoom, just um, speak up. Malia Marquez, Jeslyn Gonzalez, Leona Lealoha, Tamara Halton, Morris Fantastico Jr. They're all, these are all opposition. Anne Medeiros, if you're here, you can just um, stand up. Kenneth Fabrito, um, Patrick Kahavaiola'a, Jay Kimo Keolana, Leah Kamalu, Dodi Green, Kahana Kawahi, Dale Evans, all in support, opposition, all opposition. Lena Suzuki, Stephanie M, Nicola Miller, Nani Peterson, Mia Lisa Otis, Malia Marquez, Lori Asana, Larry Duque, Jody Melani Green, Jesse Ho'omalu, um, Barbara Smith, Michelle Brown, Erman Tenkayo, Ivan Paole, um, Jocelyn Kilipoapua, Charlene Kahumoku, with comments actually. Um, Jarek Medeiros Garcia, opposition. Kimoana, Kimoana um, Kane, so opposition. Um, Tara Rojas. Edward Paliloha Ayao, I think it's um, online. Opposition. Hello, Chair Shimo Bakoro, uh, Vice Chair Flavella, and esteemed members of the Hawaiian Affairs Committee. I am a homestead lessee, fourth generation. My great grandfather and namesake, the Reverend Edward Ayao, was the original was in original residential homestead at Kalamuka I was raised on his agricultural homestead in Ho'olehua. I am the former uh, acting district supervisor at the DHHL uh, Molokai district office and also worked for the DHHL planning office as a water resource specialist. I want to make it absolutely clear that I am testifying in my personal capacity and not on behalf of any organization that I am affiliated with. I oppose confirmation and want to say I have nothing against uh, Mr. Anderson. Since his nomination, I gave him every benefit of the doubt and withheld judgment because I felt compelled to understand the bottom line, which is, is he qualified for one of the most challenging cabinet positions in Hawaii? Unfortunately, I'm not confident in his skill set in understanding the complexities of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, the management of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and the relationship of the Hawaiian Homes Commission to the DHHL and its beneficiaries. Uh, my reasons are as follows. And I'd like to say that a lot of the concerns I raised uh, were echoed by former chair William Ayla. When it appropriated 600 million for DHHL to address the wait list by putting lessees on the land, the legislature set conditions, including deadlines for plans on how they use the money within two years or risk losing the funding. DHHL staff under Chairman Ayla met those deadlines. These plans correctly focus on the need to fund infrastructure first, with housing to be paid to the federal Nahasda housing program funds. Mm -hmm. Former Chair Ayla and staff leveraged the state funding of 600 million with millions in federal housing dollars. That strategy should be supported. Mm -hmm. However, Nominee Anderson indicated his intent to change those plans. Mm -hmm. And if he does, uh, does so in any significant way, there simply will not be enough time to carry out the changes risking the entire 600 million. This is a dangerous gamble, and in my view, a failure in leadership. Given the conditions of compliance and limited time frame, it would be best not to start over. I would have nominated Tyler Gomes, the former deputy of DHHL. There's simply too much at stake to go with a newcomer, bringing with him an inexperienced staff whose first act was to fire those with systemic knowledge of how the process actually works. Based upon these observations, especially in response to the questions posed by the Senate Ways and Means Committee, I cannot confidently support confirmation. Again, I mean, no disrespect, disrespect to nominee uh, Anderson. I hope him the best. Uh, I hope him and his family uh, the best in the future. But I am, I am compelled to oppose. Mahalo. Mahalo, Mr. Ayal. And I apologize, I do see um, Don Chang, um, DLNR, I know you testified um, in support in writing. Did, did you want to say anything? Yes, I, 
Okay, thank you so much for coming. Oh, oh, oh yeah, um, Ms. Hurd, um, Sharon Hurd from the Department of Ag, I also thank you so much for coming and I know you submitted testimony and support. Did you want to say anything? I also stand in support of and with my written testimony. Okay, thank you so much, Director. I appreciate you being here as well. Okay. Um, and I know there's some walk-ins as well. Don't worry, we have a list of walk-ins as well. We will get to that as well. I'm doing the, the ones that submitted written testimony, so. Um, okay, so Kamalani Kelly Kuli, opposition. Tracy Spencer, in a poll, opposition. Let's see, Don Aveao, in support. Teresa Tabor, opposition. Kea Wong, opposition. Melvin, uh, Melvin McCalton, opposition. Christine Camp, support. And these are all support. Duke Hashimoto, support. Kawilani Almeida, Almeida. Um, Ben Dutitra. Jonathan Kishaba. Tony Miller. Alicia Hirakawa. Lorian Chan. Daniel Curran. Um, Myungki Kang. And then this is uh, Joe Aquino, opposition. And then Jesse Ho'omalu, opposition. Um, June Frencha. Support, Denise Sullivan, support. And then we do have some walk-ins. See, I have around here. Um, Irene Kahanui, or these, the, okay. We do have some on Zoom. If you're on Zoom now from Molokai, I don't know if um, IT can get them on. Yes, I think it's Irene Kahanui, Maile Michiko, and Ibalani Hanuak. If you're on Zoom, if you're having technical problems, we can come back to you from Molokai. Okay, can we come back? Okay, let us know, um, IT, when the uh, Molokai testifiers are, are ready, we, we will um, go back to them. Okay. okay, so now we do have a number of walk-ins. Um, I, I don't have your position, so just um, when you walk up, just let me know your lizard position. So we have um, um, Pui Mahiai, Gwen. Ka'ilihiva. Okay. And then she'll be followed by um, Tom Aki. Aloha, Senate. Senate. <clears throat> My name is Gwen Ka'ilihiva. Um, I support in Ikaika's um, position in being selected and I look at it as a young, a young guy coming in, yeah. At the same time, when things were happening on Hunimai, I, where a guy was coming in from Pupukea, I wanted to take that property. I awarded, I uh, got warning, and I called in Uncle Joe Ilo, which is uh, um, Uncle Joe Tasso, which already has passed, and he was a commissioner at the time to bring uh, comfort to our people in Waimanalo because we didn't want bulls, cows in the back of that property. And I am not the resident anymore there. I used to be there on Oloru Street. I have this Auntie Blanche. I support her in the kauhale that she's doing. And when I found out that um, Ikaika Anderson was a part of visiting our people there, I live in I was on homestead and land, but the land, the, I didn't become the beneficiary. So I live in Kahalu'u. I see my dynamics too there in Kahalu'u and my fellow valley with our families there, going to be evicted. But at the same time, let's try to work it out. It's not a personal thing. I knew him from when he was in the city and I raised foster children was to help the native Hawaiian children to stay in Hawaii. On top of that, there were trafficking happening in Waimanalo. Trying to stop that. I oppose all those things too. But at the same time, I just wanted to support this family. Him, I don't care about personal lifestyle, but what work can he give to us, to our Hawaiian people, our younger generation? I like to teach them the same thing that leadership, you got to come to this lobbying and come to look at bills and try to pass bills. 
So I thank you guys for letting me here today and just be my part of my voice. Like I said, um, thank you. You guys have a great day. Are we home? Mahalo. Thank you so much. Um, Tom McKee. And he's going to be followed by Thomas Tobin. And I can um, come back if they're, you had stepped out for a bit. Um, Jeff um, Ornelas. Okay, okay. Um, Pohai Ryan. Yeah, former senator. Hello, hello. Yes. Yes, thank you. And and I'm sorry to say, and then she'll be followed by Kathy Connor. Um, I don't know how my name got on the list, but I'll. Oh yeah, I am here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I speak in uh, support of. Ikaika Anderson for this position. I am very familiar with um, Homestead. My grandfather was an original lessee in Kalamaula. My mother was raised in Kalamaula, Molokai. I was not raised in Homestead, but I did represent the district of Waimanalo very gladly. I'm very familiar with Hui Mahi'ai. I helped with the um, negotiation for them to get the lease. There was someone from outside of Waimanalo that wanted the lease. And I'm glad to see where it's come today, helping a lot of, of our um, Hawaiians in Maranao today. Ikaika comes with a lot of background, both at the city level and with um, development, understanding what it takes. Um, I'm rather surprised that the, one of the reasons that the opposition is using is that one year has passed in a three-year um, requirement to spend the 600 million that has been awarded to DHHL. Um, it, as an individual and as a Hawaiian, I find it very offensive that there is a three-year limit to build hundreds of homes when I know that the state took over seven years to build one locker room in DOE. So I find it very interesting that, that that's such an um, unreasonable um, time limit. But I think that Mikaika should have the chance to show that he can run the department. Um, what he needs to do, though, is to surround himself with very strong, capable people that have the background that needs that he needs to help him. And I hope that he does more than what is on the plans today, because we all know that the homesteaders have been neglected in the past, and that waitlisters have waited long enough. Um, I look forward to vertical residence. Uh, we understand that Oahu is quite dense, and um, we cannot have it both ways sometimes on Oahu. We cannot have open spaces as well as um, provide many homes. And the vertical um, option, I think, is a good one, and I hope that the, homes, the DHHL will be very successful with that. But um, please take into consideration this is a new administration, you will have a lot of bigger people. You'll have people that um, don't want to see a new person coming in. But I think Ikaika deserves the opportunity to show the state that he can be, the administrator we want him to be for the homesteads. Mahalo. Mahalo, Mahalo, Brian. Next. Um, we also have another Hui Mahi Aina, Reverend Kathy Connor. In support, thank you so much for being here. Um, Lucy Keppa. Oh, these are all Hui. Oh, yeah, these are all Hui Mahi Aina. Yes, okay, okay, great. Thank you. All in support then. Um, Raymond um, Almany. Um, Alvin Park. Support. Support, thank you. Christy McMillan. Support. Thank you. Roxanne Lono. Um, oh, hello. Hello, Ms. Lono. And she'll be followed by Connie Oki. <laughs> Uh, I just would like to say to Ikaika, keep God first. He might not have the wisdom and the knowledge that he needs, but with God in his life, first of all, all he needs to do is ask. And everybody who opposes him, help him. That's all he needs is help. I believe in Ikaika because he's helped us. And through God, he'll make it. Thank you very much, Ms. Lono. 
Honey, Oki, thank you so much for your patience. Oh, yeah. And she'll be followed by Brandon Maka'ava. Hmm. Hello, my Kako. Hello. Uh, I came here uh, with the single purpose of fully supporting Ikaika Anderson's nomination. But I had a secondary purpose. And I think before I explain my first purpose, I should explain my secondary. Because when I got here, I'm kind of familiar with this building, I'm kind of old. But um, I just followed the leader, the line, not knowing where I was going, thinking I was going to the public hearing, ended up in the minority caucus room where people were eating food. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry I had never met Senator Favela. I had no idea what he looked like, how tall, how short, how big, how small. And after I got my food, I was told that Senator Favela is the one who provided it. So I do thank you for your gracious sharing <laughs> of food. However, this was my secondary purpose in coming here, to vehemently protest the public quotations you uttered in regard to both Ikaika Anderson and Nani Maderas pertaining to Hawaiian-ness and Hawaiian culture. I found them to be atrociously abominable and unfitting of senatorial conduct. So I'm so sorry, but I do thank you for the graciousness you show in sharing your food with someone like me. Okay, and I, I've never seen you before. I, really, I didn't know if you were short, tall, fat, skinny, or nothing. Okay, but now I know. So my primary purpose. This is where I do have no. Um, I first <laughs> met Ikaika Anderson uh, many years ago by going to Baimanala neighborhood board meetings when he was the right-hand man for Barbara Marshall and often her spokesperson. And I, as an attendee, uh, would heal him. And then uh, he became the city council person after her death. And um, I watched many, because I used to watch a lot of Olelo Hawaii, the both neighborhood board meetings and legislative and city council hearings. And then he went out of office and then he became very active uh, with the place where I now live, which is Auntie Pancha's Hui Mahiai Aina. So I was a little concerned about the timing because I came on the Hui Mahiai Aina bus and we are so late <laughs> in the delivering this in spite of the fact that we all had good food to eat. Um, <laughs> You know, I would, uh, the thing that I really wanted to say about Mr. Anderson is that throughout the time that I have seen him, both in public appearance as well as privately, because he has been to where I live many times, he has always, always exhibited the most Hawaiian gentlemanly conduct. He has a very kind demeanor. He is open to opposition. Even when you oppose his opinion, he will stand and hear you out and carefully consider different sides of the issue. I know in the city council on the little TV, I watched him struggle many times because you know, sometimes they get kind of rowdy. And Mr. Anderson is not like me, I, I, well, not in public anyway, because I in private, as all my co-residents would know, I frequently yell and frequently use some bad language, but normally at a place like this, I wouldn't do that. But certainly, Mr. Anderson is, exhibits the most profound gentleman behavior, and his Hawaiian knowledge is very great. And I, I was very uh, personally affronted by Senator Favela's statement. So, I thank you. I hope that uh, we can successfully get him this job. Thank, thank you, you so much. Honey. Oh, um, next we have Napua Pue Kokua, Brandon Maka Aba Aba. Oh, no, okay. Oh, maybe, oh okay, okay. Um, 
Um, Michael Kahikina is our other walk-ins. And he will be followed by Ivalani McBrayer. Aloha, Brother Mike. And I make you aloha. In the spirit of aloha to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I greet you aloha. Aloha. I'm not offended by what the, the senator said because this is the marketplace of my dinner. Aloha, everybody. Mike Kahikina. Uh, third generation on the Aina Ho'opulu'ula or Nana Kuli. Been a weightlifter since 1971. Part of the uh, class suit called the Kalima class. Um, I served in the United States Air Force for four years, doing 68 and 72 as a aircraft electrician on B-52, KC-135. I spent 12 years in these hollow uh, walls and what I pride myself on Hawaiian homes at a time when we had Freddie Rice was fighting the Hawaiians, uh, the vote on Oha. I was able to uh, to get everybody here to to pass Act Three Three Hundred Two, which at that time reaffirmed the Hawaiian Commission Act and delegated powers to the to the beneficiaries as per the the Act. My fellow citizens, I I. I I'm here as the president of the Association of Hawaiians for Homestead Land, which is the association, which is a member of the show. I know Brother Skip is listening because, wow, I hear a lot of, it's like we're targeted that we cannot, as Native Hawaiians, particularly the show, uh, is really spoken about, uh, and I kind of feel like negative, but the short, let me tell you something about that. Us guys, we was founded in 1987 through the collaboration of homesteaders, and it started in Anukui. In fact, Kawu Kamaki Kanahele, my brother, is, is the founder, he's the daddy of this. Only had three uh, chairmen was Kamaki, then Uncle Sam, Sang, Tony Sang, and then now we got poor Nani Dana. But it seems like everybody is, uh, is against her. But the all also association for the waitlisters because, gee, where are they guys going? Who's advocating for them? And I hear a lot of people have advocated for them and a lot of rhetoric, but at least we bring our deeds and we did our own, our own homework on how to end the waitlist because we're the waitlist and nobody talking to us. And they, they, we came to and we, we submitted it. But what I'm here, really, it's that you guys to stop the slow burning genocide. Because you guys took an, uh, an oath to, to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Hawaii. Now, let me talk to you, uh, talk about that. Because when you uphold the, these, right, these truths of self evidence that all men are created equal, I hope we are, that we all are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. We are the governed. It seems like we're invisible. I'm here to oppose because I am the chairman who vetted into our our association to our full government Greens nomination, not not in Kaika, for that we 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 tired of our Hawaiian fighting our kids. Now stop the genocide because th this is another kalima. Everybody that you, uh, that testifying how many is on the wait list compared to to the other guys. I wonder because I was there when the six hundred million was discussed, and quite frankly. Man, a lot of money goes this. In fact, even the judges was complaining in our case that the government of Hawaiian lands didn't keep records. And as a commissioner, I'm uh, eight years. I don't think the commissioners have any power. But so I'm here to, to just say that we here. I hope you guys got our copy because we did send it to all the legislators. Nobody talked to us about it. We talked to. Ikaika and I, I, 
I would support him because he's he's a nice Hawaiian guy. I, I believe in that, but this is not about that. This is about constitutional rights. Can you guys see that we're being violated? The absolute tyranny upon the people that supposed to be in beneficial. The paradigm is that they're, they're running on trust. We're gonna change that paradigm. It has to be the beneficiaries. We, the people. I think that we need to consider one big reconstruction of this state constitution, man. And, and you know, Chair, Miley, you, you made a comment about, oh, the Hawaii is not in India because we were like to the Native Americans, Native Alaskans, we're the baby, the Native Hawaiian. Native Americans are not Indians. I want to call you, but we at least went up to Washington and advocated for a, a regulation because we, I got my degree from Western Union in public administration. The father of administration talks about span of control. But democracy, democracy. How many of you can, uh, that I hear all the time in political uh, speeches, oh, we came to Hawaii, we were a refugee and all of that, they suffered, but we got a chance. Business. So I'm here to stand on democracy, and I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Because we are putting the process, stop, man. Let, let the people make decisions for change. So you, are you in support of No, I said opposed. You opposed? Got Green's nomination. Okay. You're you understand? Okay. Got, you got any questions? Hey, I don't. I think that you you guys all have the right to say anything. Everybody else saying everything. Thank you so much. Yeah? I appreciate you coming out here. Thank you. Ivalani McBrayer. Ivalani McBrayer. And she is going to be for um, and Wendy, Kani Alpio for um, yeah. Crespo. Okay. <laughs> oh, Ivalani McBrayer. Yeah. She'll be followed by Wendy Kani Alpio Crespo. Hello, Madam Hello. Chair, Shima Bokuro, Vice Chair, Faivela, mahalo for having this opportunity as a homestead beneficiary of Kalpea out in Kapolei. I stand in here of support of Ikaika Anderson. I don't know him that well. I did watch the Wham. I don't expect a gentleman to get to get to know a plan of a six hundred million dollar plan for housing in a short amount of time. In the years that I've been a homesteader, which is 16 years, I've never had an opportunity for any department heads to meet us on some of the issues we had. So today, um, I support um, Ikaika Anderson, Chair Ikaika, because when we asked to go ahead and meet with him, to me, that's the first step he did. And as a chair, to be an elected chair, we need to have a chair that works with every beneficiaries, wherever they're at. And for me, um, his first steps that he made in being elected um, was to meet with the people. And I, and I see many um, former administrations that had all the accolades, but they didn't know how to work with the beneficiaries. They call them mine. Um, so for me, um, we have to give them a chance. You know, um, part of the $600 million is appropriated for CalPAIL in the nine point something acres. So we want to watch um, what the next chair is going to do and intake with us what the Kaupea, the Homestead Association. So for me, I'm here to support. We have to have a chair that needs all of our support. And I don't expect anyone coming in to know everything, but he has the right heart and the character that's needed um, to work with everyone. So from Kaupea, this is my um, testimony in support of Chair Kaika Anderson for nomination. Mahalo, um, Ivalani. Wendy, Kaneo Pio Crespo. Okay. And she'll be followed by um, Zizi Jiong. I think maybe try using that mic right here on the, oh, yeah, sure. that side. Might be better. Aloha, Mike Kako. Aloha. Thank you for the opportunity to be here to share my testimony. Uh, my name is Wendy Kaniel Pio Crespo. I currently live in Kapolei in Kalpea Homestead as a beneficiary and a resident uh, and a lessee. I am here to offer my support for Ikaika Anderson. 
um, never in the history of DHHL did we ever get the opportunity to sit with a chair, a designated chair. And he didn't just give us five or 10 minutes. He gave us two hours of his time to hear our mana'o and to, you know, empathize with our concerns as, a, you know, as for waitlisters. My mother was a waitlister for many years. And once she, right after she was awarded her lease, she passed away. So she didn't even get the opportunity to step into the home that she was awarded. Um, so I'm definitely in support of him, you know, and I believe that he is going to be the hope for we all to bridge the gap and rebuild the trust of the beneficiaries because DHHL has been a broken system for so long and it's time for him to, to, to stop and to make the, ch the right changes and I believe he can take us in the right direction. So again, I offer my support in Ikaika Anderson's appointment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay, we're calling back to order the Hawaiian Affairs um, 1 p.m. agenda. Sorry, we had some technical um, issues we needed to adjust and um, please do let us know though if the sound isn't coming through on YouTube or on the Zoom stream or whatever. Um, okay, I'm going to call actually out of order um, Densett Yachman. She is um, who's going to lose her ride if she doesn't go go soon. So please, Densett, Miss Yachman, come forward. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Densett Yachman, and I have been on the waiting list, Hawaiian Homes waiting list. Next year makes five oh fifty years, and uh, I'm getting pretty far gone on age. I don't think I can work the ground. Um, I am here to uh, support our governor's choice. And I do want to take it an, an opportunity of saying that I come from a family from Kalama Valley. I was born and raised there, Sandy Beach Valley. And our families, all of us, was evicted out of the land. That was homestead land. It is part of the Ahupua'a set aside for Waimanalo Ahupua'a Hawaiian homestead. I would like to know why we have to share with non-beneficiaries. Federal got their share, city got their share, and state got their share, but none of them got the blood. How is it? that these people are able to live amongst us and yet me as a Hawaiian has to hold mananui and wait and continue to wait. I personally live on Hawaiian homestead, yay! But it's not my residence. It is a kupuna housing. And thank you, thank you, Hawaiian Homes, for giving us the opportunity to be a part of our Hawaiian community. I, I was lost and having no culture, no identity, going to school, a lot of problems. I like for uh, Ikaika to kukua us Hawaiians to make things right. Kono, yeah, um, people. Uh, Billy uh, Beamer was there when I came for my application. She tells me, no more room, why Manalo? I tell her where the land wouldn't get up and walk away. She tell her entourage, go get her one application. I fill it out, I turned it in. A couple years later, I call, it's missing in action. A couple of times it happened. So I went to, you know, Attorney General's when the call was made for any pilikia. Um, I, I uh, you know, us Hawaiians, we, we know 
this is our land. But we have not a piece of dirt to call our own. That's not, not, oh no. Um, and to be evicted out of Hawaiian homestead land. And we're not there as residents for Hawaiian homestead land. We're, we were living under the understanding that was Bishop Estate land. But that was also a lie because Prince Kuhio set aside the whole Ahupua'a for Hawaiian homestead. It's supposed to be protected by Congress. But what happened? Hawaiians is no more. You know, I have been through a lot of struggles. And uh, I don't want my children or mo'opunas to go through the same process. You know, uh, all we ask is just a piece of land that we can call our own and make good the land to benefit the family and others. Because Hawaiians, we're always looking out not only for ourselves, but for others. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Gigi Gion, in support. Um, Mikhail Villanueva. Okay, and he's going to be followed by Guy Gasper. Anyone? <laughs> Ovalo makayo bila noweva hukiki o kaaina aloha o waialua kino hune yao meka mahalo i waianai. In my testimony here today, I represent myself, a non-beneficiary, and my wahine, who has been on the wait list um, as early as 1993. You know, quick disclaimer: my wahine and I actively participate in this civic engagement under protest of the illegal occupation of Hawaii. Um, <laughs> and under duress brought on by the usurpation of sovereignty stemming from the Fake Statehood Admissions Act. With that, I recognize that the decisions made in this quasi-government's process do have effective control, however illegal, within the Pai Aina. Um, and we caught co all of the previous testimonies that were so passionately and eloquently shared in the opposition of the Kaika Anderson's appointment. Very plainly, Nani and I are very concerned about any deviation from the purpose of the Hawaiian Homes Act which is to create Aina Pula Pula, a land that feeds and rehabilitates Aboriginal Hawaiians, which from what we can tell, the plan to create vertical housing as a replacement for Aina Pula Pula is a gross deviation. Also witnessed by two members of this committee, Senator Maile and Senator Kurt, um, and confirmed subsequently by the Hawaiian Homes Commissioners, Mr. Anderson lied to the Senate in, well, Ways and Means Committee in lying, Mr. Anderson violated the law under Hawaii Revised Statutes, Chapter 710, Offenses Against the Public Administration, for which Mr. Anderson may have criminal liability. Mr. Anderson, under the provisions of the Hawaiian Homes Act and HRS 554D Uniform Trust Code, also violated, one, his good faith obligation to the trust, the Hawaiian Homes Commissioners, and the Hawaiian Homes Beneficiaries. Or eight, duties and powers of trustees, duty to administer trust. The trustees shall administer the trust in good faith in, order, in accordance with its terms and purposes and the interests of the beneficiaries. Two, as a representative of the state, his fiduciary duty to the trust, the Hawaiian Home Commissioners and the Hawaiian Homes Beneficiaries. Section 101, purpose part C, affirm their fiduciary duty to faithfully administer the provisions of this act on behalf of the Hawaiian beneficiaries of the act. Three, the duties, powers, and authority as were lawful or proper for the performance of the functions vested in the commission that were delegated to Mr. Anderson by the commission. Hawaiian Homes Act, Section 202, Department Officers, Staff, Commissions, Members, Compensation. These serious allegations of violation of law by Mr. Um, Anderson, the nominee, are based on verifiable facts some of which have already been brought to the attention of the public um, by Senator Kurt Bavel, whose comments, by the way, are very welcomed by many of us in the community. 
as a matter of fiduciary duty of the state of Hawaii in accordance with Title 1A, Section 101, purposes Part C of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, this committee must call for a one independent and two thorough investigation of violations of the law by nominee Anderson. My conclusion is that for the senators of this committee to proceed with an endorsement of Mr. Anderson's confirmation without thorough independent uh, investigation of violations of the law, including uh, possible criminal violations by Mr. Anderson, would itself be a violation of your fiduciary duty under the law. Again, given the serious allegations of these violations, I request that a copy of this testimony be forwarded by this committee to the Office of the Prosecuting Attorney for Investigation. Mahalo for your time, Senator Rose. Chew. <laughs> Mahalo. Guy Gasper in support, and he'll be followed by Dean Dillon. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, Senators. And, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm very uh, honored to be here. I don't know why. I only can use one real word that I know, Hawaiian. Akua, my God. Yeah, this is what's happening with me. My God is telling me to come and get involved. You know, as a, as a citizen of Hawaii, I had no interest in politics because I always thought it was BS. You know, like, like everybody here saying, yeah? Everybody over here saying, oh, where's this? Where's that? You know what I mean? All I know as one Hawaiian is that I know that man and I can talk to him. Change is going to happen. They always going to happen. That is inevitable. But my Akua telling me, hey, I going to hook you up with these people because you can push forward with what you got to push forward. Yeah, what? What I gotta push for it. my agenda. Mr. Yeah, Gasper. Yes. Yeah, please address us next week. Uh, but it's the people. <laughs> it's the people. You guys don't listen to us. <laughs> Sorry. See, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, they don't listen to us. But I know my God listens to me. So that's all I can speak for. My God put this man in my life. My God put Senator for Favela in my life. Because my God wants me to know both sides. And I thank you for that lunch. Because, you know, it made me think. And it made me more conservative about my decision-making process. I don't have to look at the issues. I don't have to understand what's going on. Akua is telling me, hey, get over there. And read the whole home says act. So I know what I'm talking about. Right now, I'm an ignorant man. But I get two degrees. Yeah, everybody. I get two, get two degrees. Yeah. Psychology is my best one. And it's all about the way man thinks. And today, I hate to say it, but we think worldly. You know, I think of other things like how we're going to survive. Hey, we can have a house, but what if we don't want water and food? You know what I mean? And that's what me and my people are thinking about and doing something about. We like survive. We're not like just have one house. We're not like have one piece of dirt. We like survive, prosper in our own homelands. That's what it's about for us. My God made me, hey, quit my job, start one charity, and it's called Gigi's Redemption. And it's aimed at helping women move forward because of what I went through of the sins of my forefathers. And you know, all I see here, senators, hey, if you have never done something wrong in politics, then you just like Jesus. But if you have, understand that you have done something wrong before. This man, you guys, everybody say, oh, this man wrong, just, he did this, he lied, he did this. Hey, I lied. How many times? Too many. You know what I mean? At least twice I know I gave a little white lie. Why I never show up to church on Sunday? But you want to see the world? I said, oh yeah, I had something else to do. Yeah, I got stuck. Oh yeah, da da da. You know, throwing one car. But I know what that you once was a Super Bowl. But that made me go to morning devotions this morning, and made me say, I'll see you guys tomorrow, because I gotta make up for what I did. Yeah, and that's all I asking you guys to do. 
Give me my chance to make up for it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dane. Uh, Dane Dillon. Okay. Um, Sherry Cummings. Oh, oh, Dane Dillon. Yes. And uh, please um, do not touch the microphone, actually, because it's kind of uh, affecting the sound quality. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. I didn't know that either. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, it's my first time giving testimony. I am from Waimanalo. Um, I want to support, I want to support this man, but I cannot. The whole process, I mean, there's so many reasons. It's a very complicated, it's just like, oh, how are we going to solve homelessness? It's so complicated. Um, we have a $600 million chance to take on someone. Granted, the bar hasn't been set very high from who's been there before. Does that mean that we take whatever is offered to us? He has a, a very great skill set. He's got experience. He has a rap sheet of things that he's accomplished. I don't agree with a lot of them, but I know that it's hard to get things done. You got to get everybody to agree with you and come to, you know, just to hear you. That's a hard thing to do. And he's done it multiple times. I can see numerous ways that this money could be redirected, exploited, given to developer friends, or, hey, let's, we're gonna make a plan again. We're gonna, we're gonna make an addendum. We're gonna do a change order. And then we'll get someone, a design firm to give us a decision or give us a design. They're gonna do a mediocre job. It's gonna require, you know, some change either midway through the process or right before we're about to start. Oh, we've seen some unforeseen conditions. Bam, more money spent. And then it's tied up, and then the it's a manufactured um, crisis where we have to push to spend this money, and it it won't be done responsibly. I don't know how many state projects you've seen where this has happened. I know a lot. DHHL has had some, and I don't want to see it happen again. I think he could be very beneficial to DHHL. Do I think that he should be the number one in charge of this, this $600 million? No. That, that's all I got. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Sherry Cummings, followed by Hina Wong Kong. Oh, yeah. And she'll be followed by Hina Wong Kong. Hello, my Kako. Uh, my name is Sherry Cummings. I am a beneficiary of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands Trust. Uh, my mother was awarded a lot in the first phase um, with uh, regards to building out Anahola. Um, I am the youngest of nine. Uh, I was part of the Anahola Hawaiian Homes Association, the president, past president. I was part of the Sovereign Councils of Hawaiian Homes Assembly regarding Native Hawaiian rights. I was the director. I was also a board of director for the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement. Uh, fast forward today, I formed my own nonprofit called Malama Anahola. First of all, I just want to. Uh, my life was Kanu. Auntie Henny, Auntie Shirley Kalama, Uncle Buddy Wilson, they gave us hope from the 1970s at the Hanalei Canoe Club. I founded Hopeful Lele Canoe Club in 2011 when I came back to Hawaiian Homes as a way to help rehabilitate families 
because there was five teenage suicides um, in Anahola. Um, I am a product of my mother, Ruby Kawai Ulei Ahipia, who was a homesteader first generation. My father was blessed. We started the first construction company on the island of Kauai, E.F. Nielsen. So we walk both worlds, native, sustainable livelihood and building and development. Um, I see my mother not struggle, but um, accept graciously being put into the system to take care of nine children. Um, the Hawaiian Homes was never perfect. It was a process. Um, I'll just say that I, I am in support more of one Kanaka, who um, I feel, I don't know in Kaika at all, but I know how I was raised and I know my values and his grandmother and the concept of the va'a was my livelihood from young up until I couldn't paddle anymore because of my knees. Molokai was my last and then no more, I coached. Um, Malama Anahola was formed in 2020 as part of an intervention due to the 2,100 acres. Hawaiian Homes was going to be um, partitioning some sections for subsistence agriculture. Um, I went to the meetings and was not happy with the process because basically what we saw was um, Albizia was going to be removed land was going to be awarded. So as subsistence ag people, we know definitely water. And we felt that more was needed to give infrastructure so our people could be more productive on the land. And we wanted to make sure that the Elvisia stumps was removed. So that's how, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Malama Anahola was born with the pure intention of of helping the department, partnering with the department to make sure that when they do award, our people can be very ready to not only participate in the program, but to be sustaining ag people. Um, so we formed Malama Anahola, and I'm just gonna give an introduction. Um, I am the president and the founder. The vice president is my cousin. He's first generation on Makayo Road. Uh, Pogo Stephen Kawi, secretary is Kamealoha Hanohano. Pa Smith, who's also a beneficiary. The treasurer is my sister-in-law, Sandy. We uh, are very transparent. She runs the largest nonprofits for the city and county of Kauai. So we have photo um, open books about everything that we do. My board of directors uh, is Alan Murakami. Um, my cousin, Bernard Carvalho. Uh, my cousins, George and Ian Costa, they bring expertise in economics and planning. Uh, William Isla, um, Dennis Izaki, first generation Japanese um, producers of agriculture. I, I ask that um, beneficiaries be part of the solution because we're not all about entitlements and what we feel they do, they do for us, but it's how we can help and um, so we're asking for the restoration of the waters. Um, removing the can canvases did show how the department, um, they did not do their duty because the destruction of the Awai systems and the, the way that the landowners actually went and filled in the ditches. Please summarize. Um, so just bottom line, we exist, um, we're different, we're transparent, uh, we definitely be, want to be part of the process. Um, and I ask that, that you um, go ahead and confirm one kanaka. Mahalo. Thank you so much. Hina um, Wong Kaui. I know all the people on TV just watched that. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't fall over. At least I didn't fall over. 
Ano ay kialohi aka koa paulo, senators chair, vice chair, paulo anu ya uko kuka kuhu i ana. The road has not been easy for the nominee before you, and when he originally asked my support in his bid for political seat, I said okay, and I recount to you the conversation I had with him. I said ikaika. Sure, you know what you're doing or what? <laughs> he said yes, and I said, "You sure, you sure?" Because I can do all that I can do for my own name to ruin my name. You ruin my name, and I'm coming for you. Remember that. <laughs> now, with that said, um. I did, I'm not choosing to start off in the weeds. In fact, I I continue to remain at Ikaika's side for the side of Puli. If Kekua and the ancestors and you are willing, you will nominate him. You will confirm him. If you are not willing, you will deny this. But my place is to support you through Puli. Because I cannot see a Hawaiian go down the road, make an earnest effort to do what he feels he needs to do, and somebody not be there for Pule. And that goes for you and your family. I also know that through my own road, in 2001, I was courted to teach, and I I ended up teaching for 13 years. At a Hawaiian focused public charter school, but I'll never forget the day that a father walked in and told my boss in front of me, I don't know if I like that one, teach my son. And he, he what he meant, he didn't say the word, but he said, I don't know if I like that mahu, teach my son. But my boss stood behind me and it took me a while. It took me a while, but she stood behind me and I grew. I used to come in here blasting my guns at senators and representatives, and I had to learn how to engage. I walked in with absolutely no qualifications. I believe it was 2007 or 8 when I was appointed by former Governor Lingo to serve on the Oahu Island Borough Council. No experience whatsoever, and I had to do my best to learn, and I successfully Remain a part of that for 13 years. Some people love my name and some people hate my name. Kaika, you're no different. I hope that my fellow Hawaiians in this room that I've stood side by side on for other issues will not allow this incident to prevent us from being able to look at each other with aloha because I think that if at the end of this engage, if we cannot rise above, even though we may have political differences, I think that we defeat the purpose of having the ability to say whether we support or or not on any subject. So I love all of you to my fellow Hawaiians. <laughs> I come before you and I, I told, I promised you I wouldn't be a shitty friend. Just because your name took some shit inside, <laughs> call of mine, your name took some hell. But I'm going to stand by you. And I assure you, if you do uh, confirm him forward, I will be one of the first ones in his ear and on his back to hold him to the fire to make sure that he remembers to have a heart for our people. And I close by saying that I don't know about a lot of people in our community today, but I chose to support a Hawaiian because I know that at the end of the day, that I would have some hope that from one Hawaiian to another, you're going to care about our people. I know you do too. So whatever your decision be, today I came in support of Vikaika. Mahalo anu ya uko. Mahalo. Um, I'm not sure if IT on Zoom, we did have the three from Molokai, Irene, Ka'ahanui, Miley Michiko, Ivalani, Karawag. Are they there? My understanding, they submitted um, a petition in opposition. 
Sorry, Chair, they're not on Zoom. Okay, okay, and I apologize if they had a, a difficulty. Um, okay, is there anyone else that I missed or that um, needed to testify? Okay, may we please come forward? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I, I did call the, uh, but yeah, um, Ahamoku earlier, Lemana, but yes, in support. Yes. Thank you, Chair. I'm actually testifying on my whole back, on behalf today. Oh, okay. Okay, so Lemana Damate. Um, I'm bringing a, a certain perspective that I didn't see in the former testimonies, and that was the perspective of a former Hawaiian Homes Commissioner, of which I am. I am actually from the uh, Ahupua'a of Kahuku, Kau Moku, Moko Kau, and Moko Okeawe Island of Hawaii. And such, I held the position of a Hawaiian Homes Commissioner, uh, whose kuleana was the whole West Hawaii on the island of Hawaii. I would like to just say that the commissioners, the nine commissioners, have been selected to represent nine specific areas, and they're the ones that really um, bring the laws for Hawaiian homes to bear. Uh, you have to know the Hawaiian Homes Act. I can say I do know the Hawaiian Homes Act, but one thing that Ikaika is going to need to do is to be able to bring all of these commissioners and all the different issues and all the different distinctly different Moku Hawaiian homes in the different areas together. Um, it's not an easy job to do, and it, it's, it's a difficult thing to try and bring a whole pai aina together. I believe Ikaika can do this. And I believe it because he was raised with the values of a Native Hawaiian, with the heart of a Native Hawaiian. He listens to his kupuna, and that's critically important to beneficiaries. Um, in closing, I'd like to say, from this perspective, I fully and truly support Ikaika Anderson for this role. Mm -hmm. And thank you. I'd like to just say hello to my council, to my <laughs> senator from Mokoke Abe. Thank you. Mahalo le mana. Okay. Oh. Then there was one more. You can go, please come forward. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay, we do last. Okay, so be two more, then we'll close. Yes. Hello, the Chair and Senators. My name is Craig Watase. I'm the president of Mark Development. Uh, we've been an affordable housing developer and property manager since 1977. Um, 30-something years, 30 years ago or so, I had the blessing of being the first private developer to build on Hawaiian homelands. Back when Hawaiian Homes was taking 10 years to build a subdivision, Holy Kutrake, former chair Holy Kutrake, had the wisdom to privatize that part of the business. And we were able to produce 272 homes at Princess Kano Estates in 25 months from the time we signed the development agreement to the time we moved the last person in. During that Time from 30 years ago when I was 15, we, <laughs> no, we, we've had the opportunity to work, I've had the opportunity to work with many chairs. And so I think I'm in a unique position to say that um, while the chair's job is so much more than just building homes, Prince Cohill's dream, the end game was to put a Hawaiian into a home. And there's so much more to this job than that. But I, I've gotten to know Ikaika in the course of my business when he was council chair. Um, I've also had the opportunity to get to know him socially. And I can tell you this, which is what Holy Kudrake, who was my favorite chair, no offense to the other chairs in this room here, yeah, but she told me the most important thing to successfully developing homes for Hawaiians was to have the right heart, you know. And I think I've gotten to know Ikaika well enough to tell you that he has that right heart, as well as all the other skills that are necessary. But I think that was the most important thing. And I want to be able to share that with you from this perspective as one of the developers of Hawaiian Homelands. So thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Watase. And then, and finally, let's come forward. Aloha. Aloha. I'd like to thank you for your patience. You've had a long day. And I really appreciate you 
being our representative. My name is Lakey Hoy. I live on the island of, of uh, Hawaii, Kailua Kona. In fact, our new highway is named after Senator K. Oh, Kaloli. Not after me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Your <laughs> not, grandmother. It's not named after me. I, I, <laughs> yeah. uh, your ancestors. Uh, I've been a beneficiary since 1985 on the wait list. I've seen the directors come and go over my time. And you know, the Department of Hawaiian Homelands is not the perfect institution, as we all know. And that's why we're here today, to, to assure that this institution that was created by Prince Kuhio can put our Hawaiians on the land, and I'm one of them. I'm almost 100% Hawaiian. And it's not a perfect institution, and that's why I'm one of the Kalima plaintiffs. They have been waiting a long time. And I filed the claim when my classmate, Melody McKenzie, was on the panel. And I, I thought, we never gonna get very far with this Kalima claim, but we did. I think it's almost 25 years. And I don't want to wait anymore, okay? And it was not our intent to sue the state, but we did, and we won the case. Mr. Anderson, I am in support. I'm in support of Mr. Anderson. As a young attorney back, I think it was the late 70s, 81, I graduated from law school, but Prior to that, I worked for his uncle, Andy Anderson. And in my view, the combination of Mr. Anderson's, Ikaiko Anderson's skills on the council and in the in planning, he's a young young man, but I believe that combined with the integrity that he has of his family that precedes him, and I hope he'll remember that that he will do a good job for the department. With that, in summary, I support Mr. Anderson, and I thank all of you for allowing me to testify. Aloha. Okay, members, any questions for the testifiers? I actually have a question for William, actually for William Ila. Thank you. Uh, he's still here, Junior. Um, William, I just wanted to ask you about um, the morale of the staff at DHHL at this point in time. Hello, oh, Chair. As you heard me testify earlier today, there are currently two staffs at DHHL. There's the upper echelon staff that Ikeka brought with him, and then there's everybody else. And the morale is not good. So um, if Ikeka is, is confirmed going forward, that's something that he definitely needs to work on. As I told him, um, in our two hour meeting that we had for the transition. The staff is small. The staff is currently overworked and the staff is giving 110%. You have to honor them for that. If you do not, then you're gonna start losing staff that have the institutional memory that's so important because on a day-to-day -day basis, that institutional memory is what carries, and the commitment by that staff is what carries the department through. If you ignore them, they're not gonna be as productive as they used to be in the past. So um, that is my opinion. It's based upon what beneficiaries are telling me, uh, not based on what the staff is telling me. I hope I answered your question. Yes, you did, you did, thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Any, any further questions? Or? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, but, but I have one now. Um, what is your understand? You mentioned uh, a firing of an individual. Uh, I think you said it was Cedric. Yeah, I, the acro officer, Cedric yeah. Dwart. Um, do you, what is your understanding of the reason why of the firing? Well, I think it came from the governor's office. 
You have a... But if, if... So I've been in that position. Yeah. I've had governors ask me to do things similar to that. Um, I told them no. So I would hope that there would be enough integrity that a Kaiko would say no because what is the reason for firing them? They are at will employees, but anytime you let anyone go, there should be a reason for that. Um, he was one of those people that was doing not only 120%, he was doing 220%. He worked actively to give the department good news. He rebuilt the website. You can go on our, you can go on DHHL's website right now and you can find almost any bit of information that you're interested, all due to his and his team's hard work. Do you, you have a sense of what the reason was for I do, the but I, I prefer, I, I do, but I'll chalk it up to politics and not, okay. or not provide so, so you a specific you answer. Believe I have to talk to you on this side. Okay, okay, good. But it would, you characterize this as, as a political decision? Absolutely. Okay. Which, he, which Kaika had nothing to do with, yeah. but he should have stood up to the government. That's my, that's my main reason for opposing his nomination. He needs to stand up to the governor because the department is very different from other state departments and the power lies, as my earlier testimony, the power lies and should continue to lie in the commission who acts on behalf of the trust. Because without the trust, the beneficiaries don't have anything. Other questions? Okay, seeing none, thank you so much for being here. Okay, then this time I'd like to call up um, Ikaika Anderson so much and, and if optional, if you, if you wish to make a statement, you can, or you can just um, accept questions. <clears throat> thank you so much for your patience. Aloha Kako, Madam Chair, committee members. Yes, if I may be sure. permitted to make a statement, I'd, sure. I'd much appreciate that. Aloha Chair Shimabukuro, members of your committee. I'm honored to come before you today as Governor Josh Green's nominee to lead the Hawaiian Homes Commission in the State Department of Hawaiian Homelands. It is my strong desire to help the new state administration succeed by working to house our Kanaka. Leading the Hawaiian Homes Commission, which came to be as a result of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, authored by Prince Kuhio, is a full circle opportunity of public service. My kupuna who raised me, who are sitting behind me, Whitney Anderson, Hanny Anderson, Pop is now 91, Tutu's 88. They both served in leadership roles in the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, another association that was also founded by Prince Kuhio. I grew up in a very extended family, very loving family, also raised by my mother, Kim, and my stepfather, John. My kupuna instilled in me the virtue of public service. My pop, Whitney, served here for 20 years in this state legislature, his most recent time as the state senate minority leader. My tutu Hani is a pioneer in women's sports, serving to empower women towards competing in long-distance Hawaiian outrigger canoe racing, which is a sport once dominated by men. As I've previously shared, I am committed to implementing the strategic plan submitted to you in December and relying on that plan as a foundation. To date, I have signed documents that will encumber more than $22 million by the end of this month for projects directly from that plan. My team has made great progress in meeting our beneficiaries in their home communities. I have traveled to Paneva, Keokaha, Ka'u, Ho'olehua, Anahola and Hanapepe. I've also met with beneficiaries at Kapolei and Anakul, and I'd like to visit Maui in March. I was stunned when I welcomed a group of beneficiaries to our offices in Kapolei just recently. At the Ivalani was one of them. We brought them into our building, up on the second floor into a conference room. There were at least 10 of them. Not one of them had even been in the couple A building inside the headquarters. They said it was always customary to meet them outside. Aole, not under my administration. I understand we talk about trust, we talk about beneficiaries, but 
But as so many testifiers said today, we've got to ensure that we are there to serve our beneficiaries. Many of them have shared with me their hopes for various housing options. Some have expressed support for Kupuna rentals, similar to the Waimanawa Kupuna housing rental that thrived for 20 plus years, where a former Hawaiian Homes Commission chair, the late Uncle Joe Tasso, resided with his wife. Some have expressed support for non-traditional options, such as Kuleana leases, which are leases of raw land with no infrastructure, like King's Landing on Hawaii Island. I just visited King's Island this weekend, and I'd love to work with Uncle Skippy Iwane and his community towards turning their dream into reality. They've waited since 1982. I was four years old in 1982. I never want to be in a position to tell a beneficiary a ole from the get-go. I always want to look for a way forward. I believe in a DHHL that works to provide options for our beneficiaries. Recently, I received a call from a Kupuna leader in Leeward, Oahu, telling me that she was going to move houseless folks into Uluke Kukui, a DHHL-owned housing facility that sat vacant that's in need of refurbishment. Yes, I was told that a DHHL property was going to be trashed upon and DHHL-owned buildings were going to be entered into and occupied without permission. Rather than calling for the police or DHHL enforcement team, I contacted the gentleman who currently has the contract for this facility. He promptly drove out there and treated the folks on the property with compassion and with dignity. He allowed a few to stay. He distributed applications to others. I look forward to working with him and the commission to restore this facility to what it could be to house more of our beneficiaries. I've got to underscore beneficiaries. Madam Chair, if you just indulge me just for another minute or two longer, I pride myself on being a problem solver. Two weeks ago, I was alerted to a concern on Moloka'i where a residential homesteader has a next door neighbor homesteader who has stored old motor oil fuel for at least eight years that poses a community health center, a community health hazard. I found this out on a Monday evening at 4 p.m. The next morning, Tuesday, 6.45, I was on the ground in Moloka'i. Personally, figured this was a problem that needed to be addressed. My team has since worked with various state agencies in the fuel started to be cleaned up today by the Department of Health. <clears throat> Small issue in the grand scheme of our department, but I'm pleased by my administration's ability to make solid progress on an eight-year-old issue that has languished in just two weeks. When our team received the keys to our headquarters in Kapolei on January 3rd, we learned that our department had 59 funded vacant positions, 19 unfunded vacant positions. By mid-January, our department website was updated to list our vacant positions that are out for recruitment. Prior to my arrival, you go on the DHHL website, didn't even list the jobs that were open. We got all these vacancies, but you go to our website to look for employment, you're told no jobs available at this time. Our administration worked with the existing staff, and gosh, did these existing staff people work hard for our beneficiaries. But we were able to put that up. We will also be working with area community homestead associations, the Department of Human Resources, and Kamakana Ali to host a job fair on April 1st so that we can work hard to fill these vacancies. And our administration wants to encourage beneficiaries to work at DHHL to come forward in service of their fellow beneficiaries. Our team's vision is to continue with lot development as outlined in the December 2022 strategic plan adopted by the Hawaiian Homes Commission. But we do want to explore providing a mix of housing opportunities that reflect the needs and the de desires of beneficiaries while working to provide ag and pastoral opportunities too. We can explore opportunities for partnerships with our associations in providing community benefits package for commercial development agreements. I'm committed to working with our beneficiaries, to maintaining our trust and treating everyone with aloha. As I've talked to people across our state, it's been heartbreaking to hear from some of our beneficiaries who have told me the Kaika, it's been difficult with your department. As a beneficiary, I feel beaten, I feel abused, I feel disrespected. But you know what, brother? You're at least here. You're here in Anahola. You were in Hanapepe this morning. 
we at least have your ear. But you're going to have to earn our trust. We want to support you, but you're going to have to earn our trust. I respect that. All I could tell these folks is I can't comment on what occurred prior. And I am not going to beat up any prior administration because every single chair who came before me worked their damnedest for this department. Agree with them or not. They all worked hard and they all love our people. But I do believe there's a different way forward to put just a bit more emphasis on our beneficiaries, to listen to them, to respect them, and to every to do everything possible to provide them with housing opportunities that they can afford and that are appropriate to them. Thank you. Thank you so much, members. Thank you for indulging me. On Thank you very much. Yeah. Questions? You guys have questions. Start? Yeah, I'll go first. I'll go first. Thank, Thank you. you, Senator Gil. Thank you, Ifaika. Aloha. Welcome oh, there. So, uh, I guess maybe to start, you know, you mentioned you mentioned King's Landing. Yes, sir. And um, <clears throat> I I agree with you. I think that's a worthwhile effort. I guess my question is, when it comes to the beneficiaries, especially beneficiaries that are on the wait list. Do waitlist beneficiaries have, as, as you see it, do waitlist beneficiaries have a property interest in their spot on the waitlist? Are you asking my personal opinion, sir? Does your personal opinion differ from your opinion as the chair of the Hawaiian Homes? No. In my capacity as the chair, well, sure. as one member okay. of the Hawaiian Homes Commission, the answer to that question, Senator, is yes. I do believe that Hawaiians who are on the waitlist have that. And I'd like to have that policy discussion. That's something I believe in, and it's something that's been shared with me, particularly in Paneo. So I, I believe that is the existing position of the department currently, is that the person who's number 83 is number 83 on the list. And so if there's a lot offering, they are asked before the person that is number 84. Uh, because they have a right to go in order. Okay. And so when it comes to the issuance of leases to beneficiaries at places like King's Landing or the issuance of leases to homestead associations, how will you pursue issuing leases to people like Uncle Skippy and their Ohana who do good things there without violating the rights of waitlisters who may be ahead of them on the list. I'm going to have to find a way to, to do that, Senator, to be fair, but I don't want to just tell them no. I'd like to bring people together and see how we may be able to make this work. Uh, I've met people in King's Landing, some former residents who have said, you know, Ikaika, this isn't for me anymore, but I want to help to get a right of entry. And I'd like to help with a memorandum of understanding with the county so that we can get some police kokua as well as get the permission to lock our gate to keep our security. But I'd like to look for a way forward, Senator, to see how we could possibly do that. We just started this. This was my first visit to King's Landing. Well, so this first issue, time I've been there. This issue persists everywhere in the Paiaina hmm? where there are existing homestead communities who desire and are in all likelihood in many cases fit to acquire trust parcels in the DHHL inventory. But there are also 28,000 Native Hawaiians mm -hmm. who are on the list mm -hmm. who, according to what you just said, and I agree, have the right to be asked first. How are you going to, in all of those specific instances, I haven't identified a specific way forward on this, Senator, as to how we're going to do this fairly. But I don't want to leave this languishing for the next, I don't know, 41 years. I'd, I'd like to work with the Commission and with the associations on a way forward. I can't sit here today and tell you this is exactly how we're going to address this. 
but I would like to work with uh, the organization, uh, Maha. Uh, as of right now, folks would need to work with Maha and also with uh, the department to be able to do that. I want to look for that way forward. This is the policy that we're going to have to work on. I don't have a policy for this right now. Much like with this issue in I, I Molokai, believe I have a policy for actually because there is an existing commission policy on this, and it's that waitlisters have a property interest in their spot. I do believe waitlisters have, hmm. uh, and that is yes, you're right. That is the policy that waitlisters have a spot, Senator. But I also want to ensure that we, in the case of King's Landing, that we're working with the community there as well. Just that everybody's brought to the table, everybody's part of the discussion. As I talk to the folks at, at King's Landing, they just they shared with me their biggest complaint was they, is they felt ignored. Right. They felt ignored. Yeah. And I talked to them about different policies. They said, brother, before we talk policy, this is when I talked with them before going out to King's Land. Can you at least come out there and see what we're all about and then go from there? I just returned from there this weekend. Now I'd like to see what we can do to help them. I just was able to go out there and see with my own eyes what's happening. These are raw Kuleana parcels, no infrastructure, no running water. Uh, a lot of their water um, um, comes, comes from water holes. Right. Comes from water holes. Uh, it was amazing to see what Uncle Skippy built, but uh, this was my first time out there. Uh, I understand the policy, hmm. the existing policy, the waitlisters have a right, but I want to see how we can bridge this with Uncle Skippy and, and with uh, Aina Aloha and with Maha. I'd like to try. We're, we're working on right now are the memorandums of understanding with Hawaii County, both with the police department and the parks department regarding their gate and regarding uh, having police kokoa. So we're working on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, Chair thank, you. <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, thanks, Yikaika, for being here. Thank you, Senator. Um, I have a lot of flying homes in my district. You do? And the needs, you know, I was just pointing out King's Landing. Go Keokaha, if you go to Waimeanui, if you go to Pukapu, the needs are different. This is a massive undertaking. How are you setting out to prioritize what you're going to start working towards? Because infrastructure, if we had a lot of infrastructure in place, we could start moving and building, but we don't. There are things that, I mean, there's some areas that don't even have roads. We had the big fire and we didn't have a a serviceable road to get fire equipment out there. That's right. How are you structuring to set up your priority that we can get stuff done short order? Okay. Fair question, Senator. First and foremost, our top priority is Act 279 implementation. Our team meets with our divisions uh, once a week to go over these items. Uh, the first that I signed was for Hanapepe lot development, $18.7 million. Those funds should be encumbered by the end of this month. The second document I signed, Senator, that came directly out of the Act 279 is a memorandum of understanding with Kamehameha Schools for water development that will make Lot Iopua and Kona possible. So what we're doing, Senator, what I am doing is relying on our hardworking staff, our existing staff, particularly in our planning division, our land management division, as we roll out these different plans to be able to be signed, Senator. That Act 279 is a priority for us. Uh, we're also it, having a priority, Senator, on filling our vacancies. As many folks have testified here, our department staff is overworked. Overworked. We filled I think five or six vacancies in my last six weeks. Some folks ask me, brother, how do you fill these vacancies so quickly? We try to put our recruitments out on the street as quickly as possible. But our darn website before I arrived, I mean, you couldn't even go look there for a job, Senator. So these are some of the things that we had to work with. But our existing staff, not, I, mean, I know some folks like to say my staff, existing staff. 
We all want Ohana over here. Let's not do an us versus them. There's been too much of that. I'm not doing that anymore. Our existing staff, they busted their butt, Senator, on that website. And we're able to get that out. So that's another priority. We fill our vacancies. We bring in people to help our existing good people. We're going to be able to get these projects moving. We're looking to streamline our processes. Working with the other departments like Director Ed Sniffen with the State Department of Transportation. He's provided Kokua in sharing a list of his vendors as he's brought forth digitization in his department. And that's another priority for our senator is digitization. Digitizing our wait list and also making possible more digital interaction and transactions within our department. So all of these things, Senator, are priorities for us to help us to be able to implement Act 279. We're going to use that as a foundation. I'll say it, I've said it many, 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 many times. We're going to utilize that as a foundation while we also look to maximize housing opportunities for our people. But that's how we're prioritizing, Senator. Act 279 is of utmost importance to us. Get people in houses. Act 279 is primarily lot development, Senator. But as we, as we do that, then we will be able to turn those into housing. And earlier when I've appeared before this committee, please forgive me, coming from the Honolulu City Council, I'm a development policy person. Whenever we talked development, infrastructure was subgrade anything below ground. Vertical construction was anything built above ground, anything, whether it's high rise, whether it's single family, multifamily, low rise. I've since learned I can't use those terms anymore, Senator. They confuse the heck out of people. Okay. And that's on me. That's my bad. So what we'd like to do, Senator, in addition to the, lot, to the lot development, yes, is be able to build above ground homes. Homes that are appropriate for our people that they could afford and where they could thrive. For some folks, no matter what we do, they're not going to be able to afford a mortgage. But we have partnered with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs on financial literacy programs and our hardworking staff is interested in doing more with that financial literacy programs. So these are some of the things, Senator, that uh, our team collectively, entire department, working on. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I just get a few questions. Um, I just wanted to go back on um, December 12, 2022. I see the civil be reported that um, you said you didn't apply for DHHL director for the position and wasn't um, contacted by Governor Green's office to December 2nd about um, the position. So is that true? You didn't apply for the position? Thank you for that question, Senator. I did not initially apply or seek interest in the position. I was, I received an invitation to submit a resume and to sit in front of Governor Green's transition team from a member of his transition team. I accepted the invitation to sit in front of the committee. When I showed up to sit in front of the Governor Green's transition team, I found out that there were other people who had received the same invitation that I got to sit in front of the transition team. And I understood when I was leaving that there were more folks who were going to be coming in who'd also been invited to sit in front of the transition team. That's how I came to apply, Senator. The, the governor's transition team invited me to submit a resume and to sit in front of the transition team. If I bombed that interview, I would probably not be in front of you here today, Senator. Yeah, I guess a lot of the questions is that because um, there was other applicants that was uh, looked upon and conversations that I had with the department, um, your name was never, ever discussed. I had a lot of talks with, um, when I was the chief of staff, Brooke Wilson in my minority caucus office, and they first approached me on the idea of Ed Sniffin, of being the DHHL chair. And I said, why would he, wouldn't he want to be 
transportation chair, right? And they said they need somebody with infrastructure, um, I guess, uh, qualities and I guess, you know, some experience. I said, I could support um, somebody like him for uh, I went home and homelands. Then I brought up a few other names um, that had uh, surfaced around. And one of them was Robin Danner, um, having anything to do with the Department of Hawaiian Homeland, um, anything to do with her ideas or anything going forward. That's why it was kind of disturbing that um, when I got the call when I was at Nanakuli's. Christmas on the Ave, that I got a text, um, not a text, excuse me, the Kupunas came, talked to me over there and said, um, is that true that Ikaiko is going to be the home? I said, I don't know. I, I, I did not know. So I text broke. But this is my first engagement with texting broke. Um, I engaged in, in, in texting broke. Um, there was no reply when I said um, that I was not I was very concerned on the selection of um, you uh, being the Department of Homeland Home Chair. And I didn't get any reply. Going forward, um, so do you know, did they ever explain to you the other applicants that applied for the position and did they actually interview? I didn't ask who the other applicants are, Senator. Because um, one of the main reasons of, of, of not applying um, at the time, um, did you feel at, at that time when you, because um, you didn't apply, did you um, had the qualifications to um, run the HHO? Sure, Senator. I, I feel that I have the qualifications to run the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. I feel I have the heart to serve our people, and I feel that with my solid background in community planning, long range planning, transit oriented development, housing, infrastructure, sustainable community plans, development plans, that I do bring a certain skill set to this department that others may not have. There's a lot I need to learn, Senator, I'm not gonna be wrong. But yes, I feel I'm qualified to lead the position or I wouldn't be here. Yeah, another question is uh, on January 19th, um, let's let's go January, January 9th. Um, receiving the report that you uh, how much how much time did you spend with the DHHL staff in preparation for the December uh, January 10th uh, info briefing? Because oh. uh, let, let me let me rephrase this. So I received a report that you did not spend time with DHH staff preparing for January 10th information meeting, is that true? No, Senator, we did spend time. How uh, much time, uh, how much time did you, um, leading to January 9th, did you spend with the DHHL staff preparing for the WAM briefing? Okay. So I got the keys to my office, Senator, on January 3rd. On January 4th, I met with staff who go over the testimony. Now keep in mind, Senator, when I came into the, when I got the keys to the office on January 3rd, the Ways It Means testimony was due on January 5th, 48 hours. Nonetheless, had to read the testimony, had to work with staff to see exactly what was in it. Met with staff on January 5th to do that. Excuse me, January 4th to do that. We spoke again on January 5th. I also spent time uh, with staff on January 9th. So it was at least those three, three days, at least three days, Senator, from my six work, five working days before the hearing. The only reason why I say I bring this up is that um, during the WAM hearings, um, I guess, um, we we know that you have um before you came in we have a lot of good staff oh yes at, at, at um dhl we we know that oh yes we know about it but what i didn't understand um because a lot of people that because i do this 
Facebook thing, whatever, was, you know, at the time in the beginning part, um, was saying that, you know, they're blaming the staff of not preparing you um, for the meeting. I certainly didn't blame my staff. No, no, I, I, I didn't see you. But as the meeting went on, they, they realized that um, the not only the lack of um, you know, preparedness and um, of, of the meeting and understand the short period of time that you had to prepare for the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, one of my colleagues during the meeting offered a um, few times to see if you needed more time. So the meeting went on to three or four hours. I forget it. It was very long. But at that time, I, instead of you, um, and I, I didn't know why you did it at that time, um, take into consideration to take that offer and end the meeting. Um, and then, or ask one of your staff to come forward and, and help you, um, even if you didn't know, because of course you, you, you shouldn't have known everything because you, you are new uh, to the area. But the problem that I have is that you kept on saying the reason for your um, um, not being, you know, not to be able to answer the questions was that you're going to have a mission hearing that you couldn't tell us too much about it. You couldn't talk to the commissioners, even though you could have probably called them one by one. You can't but, do that, Senator. Yeah. That's okay. a violation of the, of the Sunshine Law, Senator. You can't do that. What, what, what part of the Sunshine Law to call them and get them prepared of, of any kind? I mean, well, I'm not asking them for support you or any kind. Just to get information on the correction of the plan. That's already public notice. I was advised by the Attorney General not to okay. do that, Senator. All right. Yeah, we, we, sorry. We, 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 but I follow the Attorney okay. General's advice. So then, there. after you told us that you was going to prepare uh, or, or go see them on... Um, Commission hearing, and then you said you was gonna come back to us, um, you know, better better prepared um, for the questioning on uh, <clears throat> on January nineteen. And uh, when I'm briefing with Hawaiian uh, Affairs and Wham, you came um, and told us about your uh, five point plan that um, to deviate from the plan on December 6th commission meeting, he said they approved your plan. What was uh, the report about the commissions agreeing to your deviation issue? First, Senator, let me address, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, there are quite a few questions here, so I'm gonna do my best to go through these by memory. Your first question, you asked why I didn't bring my staff up with me at the first uh, Ways and Means hearing. Uh, to the contrary, Senator, I did do that. I brought a number of my staff members up with me on, on the 9th. Uh, Lehua Kenny Laucano was there. Stuart Masunaga was there. Rodney Lau, our ASO, was there. And the reason I particularly remember Rodney Lau, Rodney Lau was the ASO of the department when I was a budget analyst in house finance assigned to the Department of Home, Hawaiian Homelands back in the early 2000s, and Rodney has since not been able to return to work. Unfortunately, this was the only meeting he was there for, but he was there. Uh, we also had Andrew Choi with us there, and there were some others. So we did bring our staff up on January 9th, okay, and so they shared with us. I guess with, you with, with us too. So I did rely on my staff that day. They were there, and they did brief, but they did uh, cool in answering questions for the committee. They were there, Senator. Okay. So what was, okay, you, you, you confusing me. I know they came up the second time you came. So They were there the first time too. You no, know, they're always there. But how much of and them came, them how much of them came and answered the questions from the WAM chair on the actual plan that was uh, um, Voted on beneficiary. On January 9th, Senator, at least all of those people, I mean, and I'm sorry I'm naming them by memory, but it was at least all of them one time. They were there, they came up to the table. Yeah, that's, yeah, not, so, what, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking you, when you couldn't answer the questions to what the chair was asking, mm -hmm. how much of them came up and answered the questions to the chair of what the chair was asking when it came on how 
at that time, he was going to spend 600 million. It's the first meeting, not the second, you know, um, on how he was going to spend or go to the first uh, uh, 170 million of the original uh, commission plan in December. Again, Senator, for going to the first meeting, I've got to go back to my staff did come up and join me answering questions. So I just watched that tape last night, Senator. Get you there. Okay. I watched that tape, Senator, last night, but quite a bit of it. Hi. Okay. Hey, right. Right. Yeah. May I ask a follow-up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you just mentioned in regards to your uh, hesitancy with uh, communicating with different commissioners in general, as opposed to uh, conversations related to um, individual items that could potentially come up as business before the commission? Yes, that's what I was advised by the AG. When did you meet with the Deputy, Attor the Deputy Attorney General? Mm -hmm. I talked to him on the phone. Uh, when did you meet with him? Early January, Senator, I can go back to my schedule and look. Uh, my phone. Did you also meet, did, did you uh, have discussions with the Attorney General prior to your was the, presentation before the Joint Committees on the 10th? Did I have, with the Deputy Attorney General, yes. Okay, and you also met with your staff who joined you at the briefing before the that January 10th? Sure. Okay. Sure. Did they brief you on the budget submittal and the uh, 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 and the, the testimony packet? The testimony packet. You know the the January the commission package of of yes. Did they brief you on that? Yes, Senator. Did you ask the staff what the legislative requests were going to be? Uh, we went over the legislative requests. We also went over the December 6th strategic plan that was submitted. So I guess my question is, you know, at, at multiple points in that briefing, uh, you mentioned the need for, uh, no need for an extension. You said I wasn't asking for an extension that right now. That's right, right. multiple points. You said there you you was you were not at that moment asking for an extension. Yes. And at multiple points, the justification that you gave was that you had not yet discussed that matter with the Hawaiian Homes Commission, and that the Sunshine Law prevented you from having those discussions. Right? From, from yes, from anything okay. that may so be on it. My question it. is, if you met with staff and they briefed you on your budget proposal and on your legislative package that you submitted before the committees, how could you not have concluded what the position of the commission was? I think it was still fair, Senator, for me to have that first meeting. I didn't even had a chance to meet some of the commissioners, Senator. I just think it was, I, I it was only a week later. It was okay, only so a week you, later. So, so I asked for the committee's indulgence. I think that's fair, Senator. Additionally, as I also shared, and I know there's separation between the governor's office and my office, but I also thought it was fair that I at least shared that uh, with the administration just prior to saying anything publicly. I just thought that was fair. I'm not asking, certainly what I want to ask. How much time did you have before you officially started? And and uh, uh, you know at DHHL, and then when we when we all appeared. Together at seven days, Senator. Seven days. Seven days. So the testimony that you submitted to WAM, that Dated you January 10th. that you met with your staff and with the Deputy Attorney General to be briefed on, mm -hmm. included the bills and budget package that were approved by the Hawaiian Homes Commission. Which are you are you referring to the strategic plan, Senator? I'm referring to the testimony packet that you submitted okay. to the. I only find one bill in here, Senator. There's one bill here relating to the disposition of water rights. I don't see any other bills here. If there are, please show them to me. Director, did you read your own testimony packet yes, before it was submitted to the Ways and Means and we Affairs it. Committee? We went over it, Senator. 
As I said, at least three days, at least over the course of three days. If, if you read it, then how could you have sat at the table before the Senate and contradicted the recommendations of the commission? I didn't contradict the recommendation to the commission, Senator. What I asked for was some indulgence to be able to talk with the commission on those items because the meeting was only going to be next week. That's what I asked. I thought that was a fair request, being it was only going to be the following week. That's what I'd asked. Now, if you look in the December 6th strategic plan that was submitted prior to my arrival, that was voted on by the commission, yes, there are all these, there are these different bills that are attached. That's true. So, Ikaika, I'm looking at a copy of the testimony submittal that you sent to the Ways and Means and Hawaiian Affairs Committee on December 10th. December 10th? I mean, on, on January 10th, okay. excuse me. That includes a copy of the strategic plan to implement Act 279. It's uh, Exhibit C, I believe. It includes the strategic plan to implement Act 279 of 2022 that was approved. That's the plan that's dated the December 6th. I'm asking. On page three of that plan, under the heading proposed legislation, it reads, Act 279 instructed DHHL to mm -hmm. submit the strategic plan, including findings and recommendations of any proposed legislation that would help with the implementation of Act 279. This was required by law. DHHL, which in this case is the commission, recommends six legislative proposals that have been approved by the Hawaiian Homes Commission for hopeful enactment next legislative session. Mm -hmm. Number four, HHL-08, requests an extension of Act 279. Mm -hmm. You submitted this before the committee, and then in testimony before the committees, contradicted this testimony. Senator, this was submitted in addition to my testimony, was submitted with my testimony. That's right. Okay. Did you read it so, before you... Of course you... I read it, Senator. But then this was submitted you... with my testimony. I didn't author this. This then why has my name on it. it. I, I'm, may I answer? Sure. I submitted this with the testimony outlining the strategic plan that was submitted to the legislature almost a month prior to the... More than a month prior to the January 10th date as supplemental information. You already had it. Now. Yeah, and in, because I introduced the bills on behalf of the department in the interim after the election when there was no yes, Hawaiian Homes you did the chair. Yes, you did the right. Department of... of so I already read the strategic plan before you came and presented okay. before WAM. Okay. So... Which is why I recognized it in your testimony submittal. Yes, we submitted that to... Before. We submitted this with our testimony. Yes, we did. What I had asked you is, may I go back to the commission just to have that discussion since the meeting is next week? That was my ask, Senator. And Why was it necessary to have this discussion with the commission if they had already taken action, which included a recommendation to the administration to submit these bills for consideration to the legislature. Senator, I want it to be absolutely certain. It, again, the meeting was only going to be so you're a week after. I have I hadn't had the chance to even meet some of these commissioners. I was my feeling was, and that's why I asked, if I could just talk story with the commissioners next week, because it, it's only next week that our next meeting is it's not like we have to wait a month or two or three. It was a week. <laughs> the day, exactly a week later where our meeting started. I just thought that was fair to do, Senator. I've, I've always tried to collaborate with folks. I thought it was fair to talk to the commission. Just meet with them one time. At least have that first meeting. That's why I asked to do that. Chair, I'd, I'd like to ask a follow-up question, but it's a little bit of a deviation. So if, if there are any other... Is that okay? I yes. Yeah, 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 please proceed. Okay. I'm going to switch gears. What is your... What is your feeling on your obligations under 206, Section 206 of the Act?
of other officers not to control Hawaiian homelands? What specifically are you asking me, Senator? Well, so as, as uh, testified to earlier by former Chair Isla, yeah. he mentioned in his testimony that there are times in which you may have to say no to the governor and that you cannot serve two masters. Yes. Section 206 says that the powers and duties of the governor in respect to the lands and natural resources of the state shall yes. not extend yes. to having status of Hawaiian homelands. Mm -hmm. To me, in essence, that that obligates you to follow the directive of the commission. Now, there are other sources in the statute that also require that. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I'm having trouble understanding why, if you read the testimony, you appeared before the Ways and Means and Hawaiian Affairs Committee. And well, kind of not if I read the record. testimony, correct you, I read the testimony. Okay, so if you read the testimony, then why did you directly contradict the directives of the commission in your testimony before the legislature? Again, Senator, I asked to go back to the commission and talk with them. I don't know how much clearer I can be on that with you. That was my request, to go back to the commission and talk with them next week in a meeting because the meeting was only the next week. And as a result, the chair of the Ways and Means Committee in a subsequent briefing directly attested his opposition to HHL recommendation number four, which was the extension of the 300 million, the Act 271. Which, which bill is that, Senator? Just so I'm, you're talking about 004? It's, it's the extension of Act 279. In the second briefing, mm -hmm. the WAM chair said, I'm not inclined to hear the extension because you as chair already said that you weren't interested in, in supporting an extension. Senator, it's, it's certainly the legislature's will to decide whether or not to, to allow for the clarification of the date. And that's the department's, of, of, that's the official position. Uh, that's my official position anyway is that with the date, we're seeking clarification of it so that it is the same as the Act. So Act 206, the reason I bring up Act 206 is it, um, it creates fiduciary responsibilities sure. upon you as chair to make sure that you're following a certain standard of care when you, when you conduct business, to make sure that you're following the directives of the commission, mm -hmm. And to make sure that you're not creating situations that put the trust assets at risk. And, um, and I found that I found that your testimony in that January 10th briefing potentially put the assets at risk because now my bill and the administration's bill requesting extensions are potentially no longer going to be given due consideration in the Senate. That's certainly the prerogative of the Senate, Senator. Uh, but I, I would look at the, I consider the legislation that you introduced as clarification of the date to match the act to date of 2025. And I also will tell you, Senator, uh, for the work that you've done and your willingness to pick this ball up, our department has nothing but aloha for you, sir. You're willing to do that. Thank you. Uh, and that you committed you. to do that. Thank you, Chair. Okay. That was very generous. Sincerely, Senator, that was very generous on your part. You didn't have to do that. And you didn't. I thank you for that. Okay, okay a little bit. Okay, yes. Senator, you're first. I have a few areas. Of a question, uh, but I'd like to give you the opportunity to respond in your own words to your critics or your people who oppose the nomination. And I want to acknowledge you for the, the the way. To me, one of the values of a leader is how you treat adversaries, competitors. You know, and I, and I appreciate the way you have conducted yourself regarding that. Um, there's one of the 
claims from you uh, is that that you may be too close or percept perceived to be too close to the governor. And I can understand it, and particularly this department, because of the fiduciary responsibility, I think it's the only department that has really an inherent conflict of interest in the trust duty and the duty of the state. Um, and so the, the question, uh, I guess there's, there was something mentioned about two staffs. You know, I'm not sure, I don't have the background as to, you know, uh, did you bring in staff or you have staff that you selected that would be your considered leadership staff compared to the... The office of the... Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, you can fill in. I, I don't, I'm very sketchy on this. I'm trying to just get an idea of, of um, what your take on it is. Okay. Um, Senator, may I start with... Uh, what you'd asked about my adversaries, yeah. if that's okay. Yeah. You know, Senator, I followed you for some time. Uh, you served alongside my grandfather in the Senate years ago. I've always found one of the hallmarks of your career, Senator, is being about fair play and making sure people are treated fairly. You know, my kupuna who raised me taught me that trust and respect aren't given, they're earned. My grandfather particularly taught me that. So what I would say to my adversary, Senator, is I haven't earned their trust yet. That's something I need to do. And when I was in Panaebo this week, I had a I had an auntie come up to me and she told me, and I've been meeting in meetings all day, it's been a trying day, and she looked at me and she said, Brother, I mean no disrespect towards you. But I didn't aloha you when you came in, because I don't trust your department. I don't trust how it's been run. Frankly, sir, because you represent the department, I don't trust you. That's exactly what I responded to her, Senator. I said, I haven't earned your trust yet, Auntie. But the fact that you're here, and you're at least going to allow me the opportunity to talk with you, I can allow you for that. By the end of that two-hour meeting, this Auntie at least came up to me, gave me a warm, sincere hug, and she said, Brother, I'm still not sure if I can support you, but I'm willing to work with you now. At least get the sincerity in your heart. So what I would say to my detractors, Senator, I haven't earned their trust. They have every right to come up here and say everything they said. This is a public forum. This is a very public position. If I can't take the heat, Senator, I shouldn't have accepted the transition team's offer to interview. So that's what I would say to folks, Senators. I haven't earned their trust. But I'd be honored for the opportunity, should you confirm me, to try to do that. So the two staffs? You know, Senator, I, I, with no disrespect to anybody earlier, I, I just find that downright divisive. And that's part of what I hear as I travel the state from our beneficiaries. Well, the way the department was wrong. So divisive in the past. I think I shared with you the group of Kapolei homesteaders who said, we've never even been in your building. What do you mean my building? This isn't my building. This is your building. I just work here. So I asked all of them, can I see a show of hands? How many of you folks actually been? inside the building, past the doors, not one hand went up, not one. And as Ati Ivalani stated earlier, she's been a homesteader for north of 10 years. So I don't view my staff and this staff and her staff, I don't even view my deputy staff what you as being different from So my the staff. people, there's I think more than one person that has the perception, I believe, that there are two staffs and what do you say to their perception? Are they blurry-eyed or I'm, I'm not sure. How would you characterize? Um... I'm hopeful that I can, I hope that I'll be permitted. No, no, what do you think of their perception? How does that, you know, you're sitting, uh, you're now the chair and director. Yes, sir. And there are those within your midst that feel uh, that and so, Right, right or wrong. I mean, you know, just let's say they're, they're wrong. I don't know. What is your? Um, how do you relate to people who have that view? I don't see that, Senator. But if people do feel that way, if folks have every right to feel the way they feel. What I would like to do is talk with staff, and I'll make every effort to do that. Talk with staff. Myself, not sending surrogates, 
but to see if there are any concerns and what I can do to address them. I can tell you that as we've made strides in improving our website, putting our vacancies on the website, uh, asking for accountability when job interviews happen, how many people have applied for something, hiring a position that sat vacant for 18 months, I hired that in my first three weeks. That's a position that welcomes people into our office. Perhaps some folks felt I move a little too quickly, Senator. But what I'd like to do now going forward hearing this, and some of this I'm, is new to me and new information, but I'm not a punitive man, Senator. If these issues exist, I want to talk to people and I want to fix them. And I plan to do that. Okay. I don't know uh, how much you, you're comfortable in saying, um, but there was the, the individual that was fired uh, apparently from uh, by a request from the governor I, I don't know that what's true exactly but you can maybe fill in the the, the facts and 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 uh, I don't know if you'd agree with their characterization that it was a political request uh, versus one that's for the betterment of foreign regarding the the personnel action the state attorney general not the deputy the state attorney general has advised me that I can't speak about that okay now that's good. Okay. Um, I have a few questions. Um, yes, Madam Chair. Okay, so the the Hawaiian Homes Commission meeting that you just, the most recent one, I think it was January 27th, something, was that in the Hawaiian Homes building? It was in the Hawaiian Homes uh, meeting building. Okay. On our couple A campus. Yes, Senator. And there were, and that was open to beneficiaries and many in fact did attend. Absolutely. It was, it was a public meeting. That was open to any beneficiary who wanted to participate okay. and it was agenda beneficiaries are welcome into the building uh yes okay. what i'm saying is that if you are, are you asking me to clarify what i said earlier yeah i mean it sounds like you're saying that prior to, to the, okay the, so here's the, our couple a campus welcome to the building yeah here's our couple a campus and here's the headquarter building where administration and i are housed yeah i've been there yeah and then over here is the Halle where we have our public meetings. Mm -hmm. Beneficiaries, those couple of folks instinctively went to the area where the Hawaiian Homes Commission meetings are held. I brought them into the administration building. I just felt that the administration building, the whole campus is everybody's. And I didn't do that because, oh, these people never came in here before, let's bring them in. I, I thought it was customary for folks to come into the building, okay. into the administration section. But I mean, I'm sure beneficiaries have been in the administration building before, correct? I can't answer that, Senator. Yeah. I can only tell you what this group of 10 beneficiaries told me. Okay. I mean, Not so maybe one of them had been inside the administration building. That's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I just thought that was interesting that people who'd yeah. come to the campus who lived in the couple A homestead for so long mm -hmm. had never been inside the administrative administration headquarters. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was just fascinating to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it was said earlier during some testimony that you were the first um, DHHL chair to visit King's Landing? That's what the testifier said. I can't verify whether that's correct or not, Senator. Okay. That's what was said. Okay. Um, I mean, you're, are you aware that um, Chairman Isla went at least three times and that... I don't uh, know. Okay. That's why I'm, I'm not saying that I'm the first chair okay. to have gone to King's Landing, Senator. Okay. I, I didn't say that. Okay. But are you aware that um, also Chairman Isla, along with a team of commissioners formed a, a task force to negotiate with them. They've got a right of entry, um, MOA, um, all, all negotiating. I'm aware right. of the right of entry. I'm aware that a contingent of Hawaiian Homes Commission members went to, the, uh, went to King's Landing. But okay. it was part of that contingent I didn't ask. Okay, okay. Very good. And then you hired, you did hire a great staff, you know, many of whom we all know and love. Um, but now... People. The team, people, yes, oh yes, good but the people. team that you hired, um, they don't have experience working for DHHL in the past, correct? No, Senator. Um, the team that I hired don't have experience working in the Department of Hawaiian Homelands per se, uh, but I must share that our uh, legislative liaison and beneficiary outreach coordinator uh, Stacy Lynn Eli is a Hawaiian homestead beneficiary oh, yes, yes. and her family has lived, I believe, in the Nanakuli homestead for a number of years. 
And the existing staff and the public were very fond of Cedric Duarte, correct? Yes. But you allowed the, the administration to fire him, correct? Uh, I made the call, Senator. And again, um, the Attorney General told me I can't elaborate on any personnel matter. That's what the Attorney General told me. She said it in writing. Uh, I've got to honor what the Attorney General said. And now, in the Ways and Means hearings, you did state that the, the Commission, you know, approved of your five-point plan, correct? Mm -hmm. They did by a vote of seven and two. But now you are no longer pursuing your five-point plan, correct? It's what you told me. Yes, Senator. We are You're going not... to implement the, the what I hope to do with the five-point plan when the commission allowed me to pursue it by a vote of seven to two was, as I told the committee, be able to build upon and maximize the existing plan. Okay. But now Commissioner Helm said at the last meeting that you, that you folks held that if he had known that the five-point plan involved deviation from the spending plan you know, that mm -hmm. was in um, their, what they approved in December, he would have voted against it, correct? He didn't. Okay. And uh, Senator, for that confusion, as I shared with you in your office, uh, that's on me. And I apologized to the commission for that. When I make a mistake, Senator, I, I got no problem owning it and admitting it. Uh, that miscommunication. But what I did say in front of the committee was that a deviate was an incorrect word. I should have corrected it when it was brought out by uh, one of the members. I didn't, and that's on me. I let it stand. That's on me. But I did say that if I were going to deviate from anything, I'm stuck to these five points. I can't move beyond here. I never said there was a six point or a seven point. I said it could only be this. And that's it, if we were going to move at all. And the reason that I had come up with, how I had come up with this, was due largely in part to the first visit that I had with beneficiaries in Panayapa, Kioka, who shared, these, some of them had shared desires uh, for other accommodations, rentals was discussed, and some of them also brought up ADUs. Mm -hmm. My most recent visit to Panayapa, a group of kupuna had brought up Kauhale. I just never want to be in a position to tell a beneficiary from the get-go, absolutely no, cannot, especially kupuna. I at least want to try. Now, the Ethics Commission cited you in 2012, um, correct? And it was due to the city, city parking employees saying that you threatened to introduce a bill to eliminate their jobs because of a parking ticket, correct? No, Senator, I never said any, I didn't even use the word job in that, but that's what in they that altercation, finished. that was the allegation. Uh, what did occur is there was a bill that I'd introduced prior to that incident that would have taken control of the legislative branch parking and put it under the jurisdiction of the council chair rather than under the administration. And the parking office had pledged to work with the council and said the bill wasn't necessary. So the bill went away. Uh, sometime later, the parking office had berated and yelled at a member of my staff, female member of my staff at that. And I went into the office and I said, you know, you folks pledged to work with us. Abusing and yelling at staff, that's not working with us. That's why that bill went away. I said, you know, maybe we need to discuss it again if you folks are going to treat our staff that way. That was the discussion. Nonetheless, nonetheless, Senator, yes, the Ethics Commission found against me. They didn't find me. They found against me. What was my course of action? I apologized. I didn't say, oh, you know what, I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have done this. I apologized to the staff in question. And I also told the parking manager that this incident would never repeat itself. And it never did. I learned from it, Senator. And then you left city council with only three months left on your term, correct? I did. Okay. And then you took a job with the Masons Union. And the reason that you told me is because they allowed you to work remotely, correct? They allowed me a flexible schedule, Senator, that included working remotely at times. Okay. Yes. And then you said you left on good terms, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Max Link? Um, okay, I mean, well, I just, yeah, it's kind of yes or no. I mean, we can give it some time. Sure. Um, and your direct supervisor was Peter Iriarte, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, I've actually, that is correct. Yeah. You know, we have some other senators that thank you that want to ask some questions. Um, and we're at 15 minutes, so I need to take a five minute break so we can extend for more time till six, you know, so we can have time for questions and in case we need that much time. So we're gonna take a quick recess, five minutes, and then we'll go into more questioning. Okay. Recess. Mm -hmm. Calling back to order um, the hearing, Hawaiian Affairs, 1 o'clock um, on GM 511. And Senator Mercado Kim, you have some questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to ask questions. I am not on this committee, um, but certainly I think we all have to vote at the end of the day. Uh, so, um, Ikaika, I just wanted to um, ask you a few questions about your resume. And um, <clears throat> Where in your work history or experience have you supervised, you know, hundreds of employees and were directly responsible to manage them as well? When I was the chair of the Honolulu City Council, Senator, I was responsible for three divisions in the council. We had the office of the city clerk. We had the Office of Elections, and we also had the Office of Council Services. And it's roughly 155 plus employees. When I was there, $23.9 million budget. I regularly interacted with the different division chiefs, the OCS director, the Office of uh, Elections director, the city clerk, uh, even sometimes some of their other staffs. So uh, as the administrator of the Honolulu City Council, that was my job. Uh, in talking with other council chairs, um, they've shared with me similar. Uh, well, as you know, I served on the council for 14 years. Yes. So I'm very familiar with the organization. I'm very familiar with the direct supervision and certainly uh, don't believe that that is um, similar as to what you have to deal with as far as experience dealing directly, supervising directly um, with them. And uh, while you were on the council, was there an issue with your P cards? Was there an issue with my P card? Yes. You no. Were spending on your P cards? No, Senator. Okay. That's... Not with my P card. I didn't have a P card for very long. Yes, and that was one of the reasons there was some concerns about the spending from what I was. Uh, not with my P card, Senator. Nope. Okay. Zero. Um, and prior to working for Barbara Marshall, where were you working? I'm sorry? Prior to working for Barbara Marshall, where were you employed or working? Uh, my history prior to working for Barbara Marshall, I started here at the state legislature in 1997. I was with uh, Representative Brian Yamane as his of assistant committee clerk. He was the vice chair of the House Judiciary Committee. After that, I, I had a stint in the state Senate minority office. And after that, I was a budget analyst uh, with Representative Dwight Takamine. And that's and it. I And I spent January, February, I spent one month with you, Senator. That's right, you did. And I what spent happened? one month with you. And what happened there? Uh, when I worked with you, Senator, uh, elaborate, what exactly are you asking? Well, I mean, I ended up having to let you go. I uh, resigned, Senator. You must have that letter in your uh, thing somewhere. I, I guess you and I have a different recollection, Senator. Well, I, I even called your grandpa to explain to him why I was letting you go because I had served with him in the House and I apologized to him and explain to him the reasons. Uh, that Senator, I, you and I clearly have a different recollection of that. I wrote you a resignation letter, Senator. Sure, they still got to be in your file. Because I, because I sat down uh, and, with you and told you why I had to. I sat down with you, Senator. Reasons. Said it's best I resign, and I did. That's my. That's what happened, Senator. Well, I'm just saying that. Perhaps your recollection is different than mine, Senator. No, no it's not. I think so. 
Because I would not let somebody go in the middle of session if they were doing their work. In the middle of session, Senator, it was one month. Well, actually, it was two. If you go back and look at it, it's two. January to February is one month, months. Senator. It's actually two. I counted the days. Okay. I usually don't ask the question. I don't know the answer. So it is. I thought it was a month, but it was actually two months. I'm not sure how that lasted two months. But anyway, um, so as far as um, I know, the, the chair asked you a question about the Obama. Uh, working for the local union uh, 630, Peter Iriati. Yes, Senator. And so in your in your resume, you says directly engaged federal, state, and county policy makers on matters pertaining to skilled labor. Is that correct? Yes, Senator, that is correct. Well, according to Peter, he said you were not supposed to work within policy makers and that he had specific from the ethics when he was grilled that um, you are not to deal with any policymakers, and that was not part of your position. When I first started with him, Senator, in September, I was meeting with policymakers. I I met at his direction. Uh, he cleared all of my meetings. He knew who I was meeting with. And what period of time? The policy he changed. He did. He elected to change that policy in the spring of 2021. But when I initially started working there, Senator, uh, I had meetings at his direction with state policymakers. I had uh, meetings with federal policymakers and also county, neighbor island county policymakers, not in Honolulu, but neighbor island, at his direction. Okay, well, he says otherwise. I spoke with him directly. Okay. Well, um, if, if he were here, I'd be happy to have that discussion. Yeah. So you started on September 1st working for him? Part-time, yes. Senator. Yes, part-time while you were still on the city council. Yes. Okay. And then you left the city council, resigned on 923 or 922 or 920, one of those, 923. September 23. And then began I working full-time. That's correct. For Mr. And you claim that you were going to have a flexible schedule. And I think you told us, or you said during your campaign that uh, you were allowed to work remotely so that you wouldn't be able to bring the, the COVID to your um, grandparents. What I did say, Senator, when I accepted the position with the Masons Union, I accepted the position because it allowed me schedule flexibility. Uh, folks started working at 5.30 in the morning. I made clear to my supervisor, I couldn't start working at 5.30 in the morning. I, had, I was a single dad at that point. I had to get my cakey up in the morning, was during COVID, but I had to get them online for their distance learning. By the time I got them online ready to go for school, I couldn't leave home until about 7.45. I get into the office about 8.30. So that was the flexibility. I was also able to pick my children up from school. And then I could work into the afternoons with my meetings with federal, state, and neighbor island county policymakers. That's what the position allowed me to do. It also allowed me to be able to pick up the medications from my grandparents. Neither of them drive regularly anymore. Uh, so I would join my mother and my stepfather in running their errands. Additionally, uh, Senator, I when I left the city council, I left on September 23rd. In early October, I had filed for divorce and I did not want to go through a divorce as a sitting member of the Honolulu City Council, let alone as the chair something I elected not to do. I had a colleague who filed for divorce not too long before I did, and that was written about in the local media. I didn't want that to happen to me. So in taking care of my grandparents and having that flexible schedule, I opted to leave the city council. I'll also state that I only had three more months left on my term. A member of my staff filled my seat. It cost the people of the city and county of Honolulu nothing, no special election and nobody had to get up to speed to learn the issues of the office. My staff member simply was appointed by the city council to fill my term, he finished my term, he handed the keys over to my successor and that was that. Thank you. 
according to um, Local 630, it says the Kaika was expected to show up for work in the office every day, eight hours like everyone else. We told him specifically that he has to put in his hours. It was Monday to Friday. He was not allowed to work remotely, as he claims, so that he could minimize the COVID exposure. He made it clear that to justify his salary, he had to come in like everyone else, and his work hours was 5.30 to 1.30, and he would, he would show up about 9 or 10 a.m. and leave about 1.30, and they said that just wasn't... And that's what we agreed upon, Senator, but you weren't there for those discussions that I had no, with I'm, him. No, I'm sharing what and they told me. No, well, Senator, everybody would... could say anything. I mean, well, yeah, but if I... you were sitting here, we could have this discussion. Yes. I've asked... I've I, asked him in the past. Sharing with you. I've asked him in the past to, to have this discussion. He's refused. But okay. it's difficult to hear only one side of a story when you don't have both people together. I can tell you, Senator, when I left the Masons Union, as a thanks for my service, my supervisor said, Ikaiko, being what you contributed to Local 630, we're going to pay for your medical. It's June. We're going to pay for your family's medical until October 31st. Just says our aloha to you because you've done a great job for us. And if there ever exists the opportunity for us to work together in the future, I would welcome that. That's the discussion that was had. Additionally, Senator, in, in setting up uh, all of the arrangements on scheduling, me coming in at 8.30 in the morning, leaving at 1.30 in the afternoon, John Moniz was sitting right next to me when we had these discussions. So, again, it's difficult to have a discussion when we're only hearing from one side, and the gentleman that you're referring to has never accepted my offer to talk story to see exactly where the disconnect is. So, I have no idea why he's sharing that with you, and that's not what well, occurred. And Mr. Moniz would agree. Yeah, well, that's not what occurred. He's the employer, and that's his... That's what he said. He said he's not going to lie for anybody, and that's what he said. Well, he say what he wants. Well, yeah, he's the employer, and he terminated you. Uh, he's then I must correct you. He did not terminate me. No, he did not terminate me. That is not true. That he is told, not what happened. Well, he told me, do not believe anything else. We terminated him. All right, and exactly I'm telling you, Senator, that is not what occurred. Again, if. You'd like to sit in your office with Mr. Iriarte and Mr. Moniz? I'm happy to do Well, that. it's the same thing that happened when you worked for me, Kaika. Uh, no, it's the same thing, you. Senator. I it isn't the same thing. I did. Again, I think you have a different recollection than I do. Okay. Well, it seems like your recollection um, may be, you know, blurred a little bit. Also, on your, on your, test, I mean, on your uh, resume, you state here that you prepared and offered presentations during local 630 membership meetings and stabilization fund meetings. Yes, Senator. Well, he said you had nothing to do with stabilization, stabilization fund. It was someone else. And you never attended or presented anything in front of the stabilization fund. Uh, I, didn't pre I, I did attend stabilization fund meetings. I listened to those. I represented the union at the Zoom meetings and made presentation during those meetings. During the stabilization fund meetings, I shared the results of the meetings that I had with different policymakers. And the person who I worked with, uh, Mr. Yadao, and I, who was the stabilization fund executive director, he and I had jointly made presentations to the stabilization fund folks before. Yes, we did that. Okay. Well, Great with Mr. Yadao. You had nothing to do with Mr. Yadao was the stabilization. Mr. Yadao was the executive director of the stabilization fund, but there were times when I did join Mr. Yadao in providing uh, occurrences of the meetings I had. That is true. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Senator Phil for the um, Chair, can you clarify the? Do the city ethics rules prohibit? Uh, former council members from lobbying for a period of time after leaving office? Through the city ethics rules? Yeah, were you prohibited from lobbying after you left office? Yes, I was prohibited from lobbying the Honolulu so City Council you... for a year. Just the Honolulu City Council? Correct, okay. sir. So when you, on your resume, when you list that you directly engaged federal, state, and county policymakers, mm -hmm. uh, you meant... It, 
Nibran. 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 That's in Aside just during my Honolulu. Yes, and just during okay. my my uh, answers to Senator Kim, I said Nibran. Nibran. Okay. Correct. I could not. Okay. Thank you for that. I just wanted to clarify because it because it came up. I could not do it. I I my question uh, the question I I wanted to ask was about the five point plan. Uh, when you were initially appointed in December, mm -hmm. uh, we spoke and there was an initial, well, it's, I, you know, I'll let you speak for yourself. Originally, uh, once you were appointed, you did intend to, to work on, um, proposals that, that you would later come to understand would be deviations from the commission approved act 279 plan right uh, again uh, senator i wouldn't look at these as deviations it was in addition to some of these possibly my we might not have even done these were ideas that i wanted to try well so on december 13th so it's possible that so none you, of this could you and i wrong. spoke about whole and core rich Right after yes, you got appointed on December 13, you told Hawaii News. Now we're looking at the possibility of Coal Ridge. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the possibility of Whole Pili, mm -hmm. and even talking to some of these developers. Mm -hmm. These are outside the box ideas, mm -hmm. but this is cash that we have to spend. Mm -hmm. Now that was the day after you were appointed. Mm -hmm. So today you come before us, and you have acknowledged to the commission and and also to us that. Mm -hmm. That there is no intention to deviate from the plan when did you come to that conclusion because i'm assuming that that was the point at which you decided to move toward the five-point plan well i was looking at the possibility of core ridge Ho'opini. those are things that i had thought may work uh, i didn't that didn't come from administration. Those are things that I had thought right, would work. Right, right. And you specifically said this is cash that we have to spend. We have now come to understand that... And what date was that, Senator? That was on December 13th. So that was the day or the day after you got appointed, I believe. You told Hawaii News Now. Mm -hmm. And I believe there may be and some cash that we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... On December 13th. So are you saying even at that point you were aware that the Act 279 had been approved and that there was not space for a deviation? I knew that Act 279 had been approved. I believe there may perhaps be some flexibility with dollars that that could be a consideration. That's why I said it was a consideration. But I also knew it wasn't definitive that Act 279 would allow me to do that. I mean, again, I had been appointed, I don't know, a day or two before. Uh, but I, I so, thought that so this was something I wanted to think about. From, from that, from those ideas, to the five point plan. Well, those ideas I was still thinking about with the five point plan. Actively look for land acquisition, so that's still land acquisition. Uh, that would be still land acquisition. It would be acquiring uh, land with homes. So was, something we we're still but thinking that's not about. A, Okay. It was a thought, again, that I knew may or may not come to pass. I just wanted to keep it alive as an option. I wasn't definitively saying we're going to do all of this. I wanted to keep all of these things alive as options. As I had talked with beneficiaries, a lot of this came from my discussions with beneficiaries on the neighbor islands. I just wanted to keep these as possible. As an auntie told me this week in Panaeva, brother, we just want you to be flexible. This was my effort towards flexibility. So at some point, you had to have changed your position on this. Because on the 17th, January uh, 17th, you told the Hawaiian Homes Commission, uh, in discussions on the five point plan and the vote that they were going to take, quote, no, we are not going to depart from or erase what was done in the plan. In the special meeting? No, this was on the Jan this was the January 17th meeting, two okay. days before the second wine briefing. Okay. You told the commission, no, we are not going to depart from or erase what was done. 
Well, and Senator, this isn't departing. What I did say is I'm going to utilize this plan as a foundation, which I'm doing as evidenced by my actions in signing the different documents north of $22 million will be encumbered by the end of this month. This isn't a deviation. This is in so, addition to it. Some of this may never come to pass. On the, on the, in the first briefing, on the 10th, I asked you, are you going to depart from the plan? And are you going to go back to the commission uh, to get approval during the legislative session? And you said yes and yes. There are other items that the administration is interested in pursuing. So I went back to the commission and I presented the five point plan as a proposal. The commission approved by a vote of seven to two, authorizing me to you to take this and utilize it to build upon and maximize the existing plan. I was also quoted in the Star Advertiser saying, I'm not going to blow up the existing plan, meaning I'm not going to significantly alter, I'm not going to alter the existing plan. I'm going to use it as a foundation. I said, I'm not going to blow it up. So all this is, is an addition and maximization. Some of this Senator may not come to pass, but I didn't want to tell any potential, but any of the beneficiaries no off the bat. I wanted to be flexible at their request. Okay. So, so that was at the commission meeting on the 17th. Okay. Okay. Two days later in the second ways and means and Hawaiian affairs committee informational briefing, mm -hmm. uh, there was a discussion about deviating from the plan. Okay. And I acknowledge that you said multiple times in the briefing, you said deviate and you've since said that that was an inarticulate way. And I also said that was on me. That was my failure. Okay. So joining you at the briefing was a member of the governor's office. Yes. Okay. Who specifically spoke about, uh, parts of the act 279 plan. Mm -hmm that were better suited to be funded through CIP and bond financing, mm -hmm. which sounded like to me in the moment, a pretty significant deviation from the plan. Changing the means of financing from the cash that was appropriated to, to the commission, I mean, to the department, mm -hmm. to bond or CIP financing mm -hmm. in the order of 600 or $505 million seems like a pretty significant deviation. Um, in addition, she was asked specifically, do you believe that everything in this plan should be developed? And the answer was no. Okay. You didn't correct her at the table. Doesn't the, doesn't the Hawaiian Homes Commission need to determine that deviation before you can come back and present it to the legislature? Yes, if there was going to be a deviation, yes. So you didn't correct her at the I, table. So we were left with the impression that a deviation was in the works. I, think, I, thought, I believe she shared the administration the department. perspective. Okay. Didn't, going back to Act 206, I mean, Section 206, did, you're a fiduciary. Do you have a duty in that moment to correct her at the table? so that there isn't an assumption in the Senate that the Act 279 is going to be changed. Uh, to your point, Senator, I, I could have shared with her that, you know, that's the administration's position, not necessarily the department's, okay? But when she came up, she did share the perspective of the administration. But, uh, Senator, I don't always share the perspective of the administration and I don't check with the administration before I take action. I mean, when I called the special, com the special commission meeting, for example, I did that on my own accord and okay, I did it personally. So within 48 hours, you gave conflicting statements to the Hawaiian Homes Commission and the Senate as to whether there would be a change in the plan. On the 17th, you said, no, we are not going to depart from or erase what was done. And on the 19th, 48 hours later, you allowed the governor's housing coordinator to state on the record that not everything in the plan should be developed and that 
significant segments of the plan should be CIP and bond funded and that the cash should be used for things like acquisition and, and mortgage assistance. Well, were you misleading the commission or the governor's office? We weren't misleading anybody, Senator. What, How can that be the case? We weren't misleading anyone. Senator. It has to be when, one or the other. No, no. Okay, then can you explain? I think it's okay for the governor's office to share the perspective of the administration, which is what I believe she was doing. I wasn't looking to deviate, Senator, and I've, I've said multiple times, deviate was the incorrect word. I've owned that, that's on me. But at the same time, I don't view my five point plan as a departure from the existing plan because I specifically stated the existing plan is going to be used as a foundation. I said that multiple times. I'm also publicly quoted saying I am not going to blow up the existing plan, which again, underscores my point that the five points that I came up with, Senator, I never intended to be a total deviation at all. And that's why I told the commission, this is going to build upon and maximize the existing plan. And then you allowed the, at the table, you allowed a representative of the governor's office to propose a significant deviation. So what are we in the Senate? Uh, Madam what Chair, are, can we have some order? Yeah, no, can you can you keep the order? Yeah, yeah. Please order. Yeah, and the audience, please. Uh, the audience needs to uh, let the uh, let, let Mr. Anderson answer the questions. Senator, I've answered your question. I mean, that's we had a too bad we didn't get that on the tape. Okay, that's, you know, I'll, I'll uh, yield okay. for now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Are other questions? Okay. 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 No, you, no, 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 go ahead. Go okay, ahead. Senator Yohar. <laughs> a few kind of areas I wanted to inquire. The commission is, is a special deal. I mean, it has responsibilities, it's a trustee responsibility that the other departments don't have, right? And I know it's really hard to balance because there's a state, so I, you know, that that is a, the challenge. Um, yes, I wear two hats. Eh? Yeah. Um, but as a trustee and a, and a trust position, well, let me back up, There, I, there are, what I'll call political values, norms, and practices, and thinking, political thinking, which I consider most of today a political event. Uh, then there's also civic, civic values and norms uh, and protocols. And <clears throat> because it's a trust, it's like a philanthropic entity that has a trust duty. So it needs to run primarily on civic values Right, and I keep hearing the conversation is filled with political analogies and political parsing and all of that. And um, I, I'm not sure what, you know how to, you know, promote or support more, uh, uh, you know, civic thinking because you know the uh, the issue about deviation, right? That That is, I, 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 the response, or even maybe the question is, it's like a political one. Um, the announcement the day after you were appointed, that seems to be a political act. Um, the reasons for your resignation from the council seem to be a, a political act. Um, and, and so what I'm laying out so that you can then add the civic value to it. Um, also, the Cedric Dwart firing was to me, it seems, a political act. And all of your responses, I, I, so I want to give you an opportunity to add the civic values part of it so that it's, it's not, you know, uh, I, I'm not left with a, a total immersion of a political 
you know, politician, and I am a politician myself. Um, and, and and the last thing, which um, which got me thinking about you, um, because I thought, oh, I haven't really, we haven't really met until recently, and yes. and I thought, and it's all been positive from my perspective. So I don't, you know, but what caught my ear was um, when um, your opponent in the primary election was trashed and vilified. You know, I call it that someone that it is not Hawaii. It, it would violate many provisions of what we used to have the code of fair campaign practices. Um, and that you didn't, you allowed that to happen. That caught my ear. Like, you know, it just, and your answer was you didn't talk to them at all. Uh, and so I, I, it, it's, to me, there's a sense using civic values, you become complicit. Using political values, acceptable. Here in this role, I consider it as a trustee, primarily a civic endeavor, more civic than political. And so I'm, I'm little trying to, so maybe you can add in the civic part because I, I hear mostly the political side. And so um, if you can help shift the calculation or shift the balance and add the civic side. Uh, Senator, I did serve on the Honolulu City Council for a little more than 11 years. I served as chair for nearly a year and a half. Uh, I developed, uh, like you, a reputation as an elected official due to my service on the Honolulu City Council. But before any of that, Senator, uh, like all of you, uh, for a time, I was a husband. I'm now a father. Later on this month, I'll be a grandfather. Can't believe I'm that darn old. <laughs> but I guess you gotta be middle-aged and crazy to sit in this chair, so I guess I'm approaching that. <laughs> um, but in my role as an elected official, Senator, I made decisions that not everybody was happy with, but I have to tell you, uh, I made my decisions with conviction and I stood by them because what I wasn't gonna have as an elected official was someone seen as fickle who couldn't make a decision, who couldn't make a call. I was always gonna make the decision and then own it. But above and beyond all of that, I'm a person first. Senator, uh, I'm a former elected official, but in my role as the chair designate of the Hawaiian Homes Commission, I'm a 45 year old part Hawaiian man, father of Keiki, soon to be a grandfather of Mokona, who wants to serve his community. And I've pledged to serve in this position for four years, if the administration will have me, if you folks confirm me. But it's with that heart that I want to serve, Senator. I see a need for my people being a part of Hawaiian. That's what called me to this. Uh, I don't think I would have sat with the governor's transition team to talk about any other department head position. position. This one meant a lot to me, particularly because of the way my kupuna raised me leaders in the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs, and neither of my kupuna have the koko, the blood for Hawaiian homes, but it was always important to them because we all kanaka. We're all native people of this land. So it's in that spirit, Senator, that I desire to serve, but also to treat our people, our beneficiaries with respect and fairness. And I know some have talked about, you know, focus on the trust. We have to certainly do that. But as some of the testifiers said today, Senator, Without the beneficiaries, what's the trust for? I struggle with that. And I also hear, really hear and listen to our beneficiaries when they share with me that they look for a new way forward in how they're treated and how they're heard and how they're listened to. I know we're going to disagree, that's a given but they're always gonna have a place at the table to talk story in our administration. When I say our, I mean our team. But it's with those 
it's with that heart for service, Senator, that this position means so much to me. It's not just a job. It's not just a job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, we'll go back a little bit of another one's continuing. Um, Thursday the 19th at the WAM briefing. The reason why I bring this up is because uh, when Senator uh, De La Cruz had um, asked him what, of, what part of the, uh, the yeah. this uh, oh, yeah. December plan, the, the, the commission plan that um, he was going to uh, stick with at the time. Um, I, I know you learned a little bit later that um, the words you use and, you know, we all choose words that is uh, not good, um, but yes, he asked you that about five times. And then one of your staff members came up and said that um, you talk about deviating and you, you said you wasn't going to um, go with the commission uh, plan. But um, at that time, you didn't know. And I, I guess because, like I said, you was new that there really was about 170 million. They already would spend about 50 million of that or planning on to, or maybe that's the stuff you're signing now, plan to spend the 50 million. Mm -hmm. So even with that, um, going forward, at the hearing, um, it just was, was troublesome that, that I understand you saying you wasn't going to go to the five point plan now and then. Uh, you also said, when did you tell um, the news that you wasn't going to explode the uh, original commission plan? Um, and I'm looking at my calendar, Senator, if you indulge me, please. So, I believe the commission meetings in January, I believe they were the 17th and 18th, I think. Um, it would have been in the Star Advertiser at that point. Senator, I'm, I'm happy to, my office can provide you the story oh, if you like. It's there. I could provide it. I'm going for it. Um... With, with that, um, of the deviation, um, a commissioner came up um, briefly um, to uh, clarify um, commissioner's stance of deviating of the plan. I guess that was on December, um, well, December uh, uh, commission plan. That was approved. Okay. Yeah. And then she, she got up and said that um, you keep saying that they voted for your five point plan. And then um, she got up and said that they never voted on uh, deviating from the original uh, plan that they had in December. Was that um, that wasn't clarified? To them that they was going to be deviating from the plan. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm asking that is because I just wanted to know if it was before or after January 27 at the special DHHL commission hearing mm -hmm. when you guys were going to just talk about supposed to just talk about what had happened in the WAM hearing on um, previously of uh, the hearings that we had. Mm -hmm. um, Right. Then the, at the meeting, the commissioners at the meeting was only. Yeah, the, the, so the question would be why? Why was the? Why was no packets or information provided for the commissioners prior to the January twenty seventh meeting? And why was it necessary to, I guess, deviate from the agenda? I'm sorry, Senator. Could. Could you please repeat the question? The question was that that meeting they gave everybody got a packet. 
That's right. And including the commissioners. At which meeting? At the uh, January 27th special okay. commission meeting. Okay. And commissioners um, asked and, 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 and discussed with you um, that why, and I, I guess deviating from the original, probably with the original meeting that was posted, I guess, uh, they was questioning why was they only now getting the information in the packet at that time at the, of, of the meeting? Um, another one was... So our staff provided yeah. the, the packets yeah. uh, at the meeting. As the meeting was going on, the staff provided the, the testimony packets uh, one after the other. Hard copies like this was provided during the meeting. Hard copies like this were provided by our staff. So that, so that was provided, uh, Senator, during the January 27th. I know you guys have been into a lot of meetings before, uh, former Governor Abercrombie and uh, Representative Gene Ward. I would never do that in your guys' meeting. Okay, I, I can hear you guys. And I'll just Sir, can, respect can we have order? I've been called the idiot, and there's heckling coming from you know, the, the audience. I'm not as, you know, I, I just tried to get some points across with that, what, what the commissioners are asking, Chair. And this is what they're asking is because they was very concerned that um, again because of the governor's proclamation to um, go away from um, having the sunshine law, your agenda that you had posted on I think it was Monday prior to the it was Monday prior to the meeting. No, it was posted Friday, Senator. Yeah, Friday. I had to, in accordance with the sunshine law, I had to post Friday. Yeah, so it was only uh, well we'll, go, we'll look back. It was it was only posted four days prior to the meeting? No, sir was posted okay. Friday. We'll, we'll look on your website. Please. Okay. It was posted in accordance with the Sunshine Law. I, I even sent an email to the Deputy Attorney General. So then um, how, how is it possible that the commissioners was confused and um, not understanding of uh, what was happening at the commission meeting? How is it that the commissioners yeah, were Yeah, there was, was confusion. You gave, you gave them the papers. Yep. And it was all saying that to you. It was there. And why are we only not getting this now? If you had posted that in a timely manner, then why did not the commissioners get their the meeting agenda and the information prior to the meeting, not the day of the meeting? I mean, I've never been to a commissioner's meeting that the director or the chair of the commission comes and give their commissioners papers that they never even get to read. Okay. I don't. I'm, I don't know if the commissioners uh, read over the testimony prior or not, Senator. I, I can't answer that. What I can tell you is our staff provided the testimony that day at the meeting. We did do that. Okay. Getting back to um, the blue ribbon panel for the for the uh, mayor. Um, I'm sorry? The blue panel for the mayor was looking for a new landfill. It had about five or six areas. Number one was... I'm sorry, when? when Blue panel, when? The landfill. The landfill, blue ribbon panel, when the mayor came over there. Okay. Which mayor? And I'm, I'm sorry, Senator. I, 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 okay, well, I, let's, I don't let's, let's just draw it out. When I came before the council and I had asked you, Wayne Black, when you was chair, why wouldn't you guys consider the landfill in Cameron Crater at the time mm -hmm. instead of continuing to look for a landfill out of the six, whatever panel that you don't remember of, out of the six landfill sites, four, five was on our side of the island. The one that I'm talking about, the Blue Ribbon, and we'll, we'll get the information more clarity because you want dates and times. And I'll get the atmosphere at that time too. So this is what I'm talking about. Now, Amron Crater and the area over there now is a bird sanctuary. And I know this was brought up to you by other people in the community that talked to you. But the concern was we was dealing for decades, decades with the landfill issue. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we had an alternate area, and the reason why I know that area real clearly, and I brought it to you when you was a city council, and you was, when I testified for not having the landfills on our side of the island. I strictly told you that all of the Opala is on our side of the island. You guys have a perfectly good area. And of course, I use the word Kailua. 
and that you got offended that I used Kilo. And, and that's, that's, that's good because they shouldn't have done that. But you know and I know that Amron Creator, after the, the lifespan, lifespan of the Creator, that that was an alternate area or a landfill that is not going to be used now because it's supposedly, I guess, a bird sanctuary. The reason why I know is when I was working for Parsons, and the reason why I brought it up to you, not only on the side, but in, in the meeting, is because that crater is huge, mm -hmm. huge, huge enough to take care of a lot of the landfill problems that we have on the west side. Mm -hmm. But the problem that we, I mean, I'm not saying that you and Creator, but I know you supported it. And I just wanted to know that. Wait, what did I support? The um, bird sanctuary. So this is the first time you're hearing about the bird sanctuary and the landfill issue that we have on our side of the island. Um, Senator, the, the bird sanctuary that you're alluding to, um, I didn't create the bird sanctuary. No, no, you didn't. I didn't even vote in favor of it. That resolution was introduced by then council chair Donovan De La Cruz. I can provide a copy to your office if you'd like. I believe in 2006, I wasn't even on the council. Barbara Marshall was on the Honolulu City Council representing Winnerawahu at that point. Amron okay. Kapa Quarry that you're referring, Amron Kapa Quarry that you're referring to is under 14 feet of water at any given time. What I have always said, Senator, as a firm believer in good public policy, is that if a location for a landfill that will pass environmental muster is located in Windward, Oahu, it should stay on the list for consideration. I had some folks in Kailua, Senator, who wanted to tar and feather me. Brother, we had a landfill for 40 years. What's wrong with you? And I said, folks, we may have had a landfill for 40 years, but all of us who live on an island have to shoulder this burden. If there's a location on our side of the island that will pass environmental muster, we have to have it on the list for consideration. Okay. I've always believed that, Senator. Yeah. Because when I, when I brought this issue up to you, you got to go. Um, never have the water in the crater. It's always had. It's always been an issue. No, let, let, let me finish. You know how I know? Because I worked at that crater. They pumped the water every day. You know when the water came in? Is when we had that big rain. 40 days and 40 nights of rain, whatever. They couldn't get the pump. They pumped the water out. But that crater was always so much feet below um, sea level. And that was, at that time, considering to be the future landfill uh, when I was working for portions. And how I know is because we used to break and eat right by there. Mm -hmm. When my friend then was driving in, when the water was empty, because mm -hmm. had the truck popping up and it was falling out every day. But they couldn't keep up when it had the heavy rain. And they already had, they already had designs that mm -hmm. they was going to use a certain liner and go for it. So we, we'll just watch that since I don't have all the dates and time. I get a lot of questions. So before you left as council chair, and I know you said earlier that um, your staff came, um, council member, um, in your place. Was that with the uh, city charter of elections? I'm was, sorry? Was that, was that part of the city charter of elections? Because you made the decision as chair to um, have him be nominated for and had other nominees. But uh, because you was chair, you made that, um, the, I guess, uh, suggestion. But is that part of the uh, city charter of elections as was the uh, other nominees for the position? Uh, according to the Honolulu City Charter, Senator, if there's a vacancy in the office of any council member where the remaining term of office is more than one year, it should be filled by special election. So when I ran for Honolulu City Council the first time, it was after the death of my mentor, Barbara Marshall, she had three and a half years left on her term, special election to fill that seat. When I left the Honolulu City Council, I had roughly a little more than three months left on my term. So the Honolulu City Charter says less than one year, the Honolulu City Council appoints the successor. If the council fails to appoint, then the mayor appoints. So I couldn't by myself decide who filled my seat uh, or the seat, the district three seats, not my seat, I was just sitting in it, to fill the winner of Oahu seat that I vacated. It was up to the Honolulu City Council. And I believe it was 
uh, council member Ann Kobayashi who introduced the resolution. I don't even, I don't even believe I, I introduced it. I believe it was council member Kobayashi who introduced the resolution naming my successor for consideration uh, of, of our colleagues. But it is customary, and there's precedent for this, when a vacancy uh, in a city council member office is only for a few months, it's been customary for a staff member of the exiting council member to be nominated by the city council to fill the seat. Case in point, uh, when uh, council member Breen Harimoto came here to this body, it was his staff member, uh, Brandon Elefante, who filled the remaining months on his term. He'd been elected to the seat anyway, outright, but he was, he was appointed to finish uh, council member Harimoto's term. And when council member Donovan Dela Cruz was elected to the state Senate here, it was Reed Matsuura who finished uh, the few months left on Senator Dela Cruz's term on the city council. Again, only a few months. So there'd been past precedents where a staff member would step in. I believe council member Kobayashi just followed that precedent. But again, it's up to the city council to either affirm that vote or shoot it down. So that means yes, then uh, you follow the elections. I, no, right I followed the Honolulu City Charter. Okay, yeah, sure. And then was there any other nominees? Um, did you know of? There were no other nominees that were entertained. Okay, thank you. I'll get you. Any other final questions? Yes. Yeah. What? Can, can you kind of go into what your approach is going to be? when it comes to your obligations under the Nelson case? My obligations under the Nelson case as far as the sufficient sums budget? Okay. Uh, Senator, uh, according to what's required, the department is obligated, has a duty to come here and ask you for sufficient sums requests. Should you folks concern, confirm me, it would be my practice to come and ask you for the sufficient sums request as we're required to do, just as I believe has been done according to uh, staff. Over yeah, but how are you going to approach determining what sufficient sums are to request? Uh, I'm gonna work with staff to determine what sufficient what 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 the sufficient sums are to operate the department so i'm going to work with our leadership team to determine what those sufficient sums are when i say our leadership team i mean the deputy director and our leadership staff much the same way that our testimony was put together in december uh, with the sufficient sums requests inside the testimony packet I'm going to work with our staff to put this together and I'm going to work with our deputy to put this together to ensure that right, we're but there's got to be some general there's got to be some general philosophy on what exactly it is you're you're going to ask right I'm going to collaborate with the staff senator and with my deputy and with our department to ensure that we are meeting the obligations of Nelson to request sufficient sums to operate the department over what over what period of time though. I mean this has been an issue over the years since we since uh, the Supreme Court required the department to In present 2012 ish a, a, a sufficient sums budget and there have been differing philosophies by the chairs as to what exactly that means as of right now my plan as of right now is to follow uh, the, the practice that I followed this time, working with the staff to put this together. If if after being here in the department for a bit, Senator, we find another way forward, we work with the Attorney General, we find another way forward, I would like to discuss that with you in this committee. But as of right now, our plan is to follow. Okay, so, so, so I guess if that's the case, then separate and apart from the 600 million, uh, the Act 27, appropriation and plan, how many units do you plan to develop over your term that are not currently in the Act 279 pipeline? Senator, I can't tell you today after five, six weeks, I can't give you a definitive number after six weeks of how many homes, are you asking, you're asking units, homes, right? I, I mean, I, 
I'm asking for your general approach on how you're going to operate the department outside of the confines of the Act 279 plan. So with the Act 279 uh, plan, Senator, we're going to do the lot development. We are looking at uh, lot acquisition. Over the past five, six weeks, we've had those preliminary discussions. So those are plays what we've looked at. So, so those acquisitions would potentially come under a sufficient sums budget ask? It could potentially come under a sufficient sums ask. That's, that's possible. It could potentially, uh, and I know you said beyond 279, but there are some Act 279 dollars that we may uh, be able to do that with land acquisition. I, I'd like to consider these things. Again, after five, six weeks, I can't tell you definitively, here are the lands we're going to purchase. Uh, after coming up, uh, with a more definitive plan, I'm happy to talk with you about that and get your thoughts. I mean, after all, Senator, if not for you people sitting in these chairs, we wouldn't have the $600 million. So, so I guess at a minimum, are you planning to maintain the same rate of construction that the department has achieved over the last term, the last director's term? I am planning to implement Act 279 is written. We are going to do lot development as the as the plan calls for. Uh, I'm working with our land management team. I am working with our planning team to get these documents out quickly so that I can sign them. We are also considering exactly how we're going to get our permitting out quicker, Senator. We've we've come up with uh, at least two innovative ways to get our permitting out quicker. Uh, okay. We're working to see exactly how this would work. These are discussions that we've had in the last five, six weeks. So at this point, it's not clear whether how how your sufficient sums asks are going to change uh, based off of your ability to deliver on the Act 279. I can't tell you today our sufficient sums requests will change and it will change this way. I can't tell you that today. Senator, after this many weeks, I can't tell you that. Any further questions? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes, Senator Richards. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate the, the conversation today, and I appreciate all the testimony and all the testifiers on both sides of the, the discussion and the conversation. Thank you, Senator. I won't say it's an argument; it's a conversation. Absolutely. And um, what I have, you know, we all grew up here. Um, I have been frustrated with and for the beneficiaries of the languishing of Hawaiian homes that's really not come forward. And, you know, I really listen to the testifiers um, and what they're trying to say. And I think they're saying they're just really frustrated on both sides of that conversation. Um, we're talking about funding. It is great that Hawaiian Homes has an opportunity to do some really good work with the 600 million that's coming for us. Senator Ihara, I also appreciate what you've been talking about as far as, and I think what you're saying is talking about the passion going forward. We're, we're talking about the fiduciary responsibility of marching the trust forward. And what I'm looking for in a director is someone with the courage and the guts to step forward take cracks like we talked about today, um, but have the backbone to take those cracks. And, you know, to your point, Senator, about the, the funding coming forth, I'd love to see a program where DHHL is generating revenue through structure. I'm not sure how that's going to fit into this, I like but I think <laughs> Governor Abercrombie, under his administration, um, there was funding that came forth and the question was, how are we going to get this going forward? Cause I want it to work. I want this to work. I really think there's an opportunity to come forward. Me too, Senator. I've listened to a lot. Um, but I think what we want is a director that is responsive and responsible to the commission and will enact and be a champion for that commission and thereby the beneficiaries, which respect to the fiduciary responsibility of that. And I think we're gonna ha have to acknowledge that there's gonna have to be some latitude 
in how the commission deploys and goes forward and you're an instrument of that commission. And so, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I appreciate the conversation. I'm, I'm very happy to brainstorm on this and I'd love to work with, but I want someone that has the courage to go forward. And what I'm hearing from my constituents, Senate District 4, is that um, they're not happy with everything, but they believe this guy has the guts to do it. And so that's what I'm hearing. And so um, that doesn't take away the concerns because I have my own concerns, but I, have, I think I have someone before us that has the courage to actually march this thing forward. So um, can you do that? I will do that, Senator, if given the opportunity, not can. I will do that if given the opportunity, Senator. But I've known you for some time. Yeah. Uh, you talked about water development in your side of on I'm your there. side of Hawaii Island, Senator. You're in agriculture for a living. You're in agriculture for a living. It'd be a dream to work with someone with your background towards water development, Senator. Let's let's take a look. Let's see what we can do. If I'm given the opportunity to serve, let's see if that's possible. Whereas we can partner together and be able to get some water development that may save the Department of Hawaiian Homeland some dollars. Uh, you told me that I, I could uh, join you at some point in walking those ditches. I'm all in. Let's go. I'd love the opportunity. I want this to work. And so, and I, like I said, I appreciate this, but I want to work with somebody that can work and push hard. So yeah. thank you, Chair. I'll put thank the you. boots on, Senator, and, and shoot the flumes with you on that water ditch. Let's we'll do it. Do it. Okay. Thank you so much, members. You know, in the interest of, we have to end because of IT and Zoom, so we need to take the vote. I mean, I'd like to take the vote uh, at this point in time. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time to, to recess. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, based on what's been said, um, based on the concerns raised, um, unfortunately, I'm going to recommend a no vote. Um, I want to assure you, as I mentioned to you, Ikaika, that it's nothing personal. I, I don't know you, actually. Well, I, the only interaction we've ever had has always been positive. You've always been kind, gracious. So it's nothing personal at all against you. Um, as has been said, I mean, your, your courage is incredible. Um, I, I would never accept the job that you, you're willing to take on with such grace. Um, it's an impossible task, practically, and complex. So, um, but unfortunately, it appears that, you know, there may be some tension between, um, you know, governor's office and, and, the, and the DHHL. That, that's to no fault of yours, you're caught in between um, your background is amazing, um, you know, obviously, um, but you don't, you don't have any experience working for DHHL. Again, not your fault. I mean, that's, um, and so, but the remarkable support that, that has been coming out, that came out today, um, I was amazed. I, I did not expect the amount of support that came out today from such a varied group of people. Um, it shows me that no matter what happens in this confirmation, and you have a lot of support in this body as well. Um, as hopefully you know, there's a lot of senators that support you. Um, that no matter what happens with this vote, you're going to soar. I mean, obviously, I mean, you have people love you and have faith in you and have those that know you better than I do, who I have much respect for, absolutely adore you and know that you are destined for great things. So... Um, I appreciate so much everything you've done, and, and, um, and this is not the final stop, you know, so this is just a committee of five, um, but that's going to be my recommendation. Um, there's a, we have five minutes left. Does anybody want to say anything before you vote? Yeah, sorry. Uh, what was that? Uh, Kaikai, I appreciate you stepping forward in this. Um, I, I know what kind of man you are. And uh, I agree with Senator Shimo Bokoro, but I'll be voting no. 
I understand that you, and I can appreciate that you were only brought on board two months ago. But since that point, the situation has grown more confusing and I think more treacherous for the beneficiaries on this generational housing proposal that we, as you mentioned, we work very hard on. At this point, we've heard from senators feeling misled, commissioners feeling misrepresented, and beneficiaries, uh, many of whom were not here today to testify, but who have reached out to us feeling ignored. Um, I look specifically to that second briefing at the 29 minute mark, where you said on the record that you had the authorization to deviate. And, and I watched last night, Commissioner Turuya right behind you, mouth the words no, shake her head and visibly squirm in her seat. I know we're running late on time. I watched you just evade responsibility for the governor's housing coordinator proposing a significant deviation from the plan in the form of bond funding in the January 19th briefing, except I, we have a letter from you on January 16th that proposes the exact same bond financing deviation in addition to ADUs. I, I'm sorry, Ikaika, the, I feel misled. I feel like the Senate has been misled and I cannot support your nomination. I think we need to take the vote. Go ahead. Okay, so recommendation. Well, I. Okay, you yeah. want to say something? Well, I wanted to share. Go ahead. Um, well, since the time that I mentioned the um, B change now attack ads against uh, uh, your opponent, um, I've been thinking about the role, and and it because it's because it's a trust. So I was looking for a, a trustee leader of the Native Hawaiian community. And what I get is a political leader who is a director of an administrative department, who, who then adds in the trustee duties. So trustee duties to me needs to be at the, at the base. Uh, and I, I, the legislation needs to take responsibility. We have treated uh, um, Hawaiian homelands beneficiaries as political stepchildren. I mean, it's been, you know, and so we need to take, you know, and, and it's the, but it's the, the conflict between the, you know, the, the budget, the state budget and, and what's needed. And we have not, um, you know, fulfilled, I think uh, we're on the process of filling, fulfilling our duty. So thank you. Sorry. Okay. Going so long. Okay. Okay. So vice chair. Okay. Chair, sponsor, Kuro. So I. Yes, oh, sorry. Not to I, um, not to um, advise and consent. So can you explain what the I know? Yes. Yeah, so um, hold that it's correct. Yeah. So, so we're voting. I'm recommending not to advise and consent. So if you vote I, you're agreeing not to advise and consent. But if you vote no, then you are uh, um, disagreeing with me. So you're voting. You're voting. And on the floor, or on the floor of the Senate, the mm -hmm. motion will be to advise and consent. So no matter what the uh, what this committee does, uh, it will be a, an affirmative motion. Okay. Okay. Okay, Chair. Aye. Uh, Vice Chair was aye. Senator Yohara? Aye. Senator Kehoe Aye. Senator Richards? No. Okay, the ayes have it. Not to advise and consent. Thank you. And then actually, before I on the gavel, I want to invite, if anyone's hungry, we still have, we have plenty of food in the minority caucus room. So please help yourself. It's go out the door to the right. There's uh, pizzas and food. So please help yourself. We are adjourned. Mahalo, everyone. <laughs>